Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome to the Fenworks South Dakota State Tournaments. And oh my goodness, already Big Red Huskers is scoring on the side. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, we don't even have a chance to be able to introduce ourselves here to you guys today. Um, in between this oh, goal wow, and the so next perfect. one. Uh, goodness gracious. My name is uh, Brendan. I'll be uh, your main caster today for Rocket League. Um, alongside with me here is Ethan, one of our Fenworks Valorant coaches. However, every game that he happens to touch, he happens to be quite good at. So he'll be joining me today uh, for some additional uh, casting and analysis. So uh, for this uh, first best of five we have today within Rocket League, uh, it's going to be between the T-Area High School Rocket League and the Bears Ford Team Veracity. So, um, something to know about these two teams is that uh, they're pretty closely seated together. Uh, Bears Ford had a 6-2 record during the regular season, and then the third team of the T-Area High School had a Rocket League score of 4-4. And as I say that, Rickmas Prime showing us how we do it here for Bears Ford. Getting another goal for the team, just topping it in nice and easy right off the side of the goalpost. It all started very, 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 very quickly. It was <laughs> very, and thanks for having me. Uh, it's uh, <laughs> a bit a while, and I would like to say it's slightly fraudulent. I'm not great at every game I touch. Uh, <laughs> Rock League would be one of them. <laughs> uh, not not so great at, but uh, very excited to watch these games here. It's the last time I was casting for Rocket League. All the teams had amazing plays. It made it very exciting, and that's another goal for Barrisport. Yeah, that's really a starting one. like with a huge lead. Yep, 3-0, and we have only gotten a minute and eight seconds into this game. Man, that is going to be a tough one for T-Area High School to come back with. But, you know, we still have four minutes left, and four minutes is pretty much nothing in the game of Rocket League. Only 20% of the match done as we take a look here at the game state. Pretty much, uh, Bears Ford has had the ball entirely within area high schools edge of the field they're just being continually pressured and needing to defend themselves and trying to get it out of their space and into bears Ford. yeah bears Ford looks like they're playing really aggressive here always in control of the ball always pressuring uh ta area high school uh on this offense here always keeping them on the back foot it seems righty and gonna go for an aerial here big red huskers Going, popping it up, going to get it off the backboard, centering it. Trying to go for Rickmas a pass. for a center. Oh, Ooh. and it's another goal. P Dizzle nice 2005. Teamwork. Fourth goal already. Two minutes to go inside of this match. Bearsford really showing off a lot of teamwork. It looks like uh, T area high school seemed to commit a lot to that block up on the top of the uh, above the goalpost there. A little bit of an overcommit, it looked like, with a lot of players going for that. No one really covering those uh, centered players that were going for the shot after the pass. Mm-hmm. Looks like the ball is going to 
get centered again for the team of Beresford, but no one's there to take it in for them, unfortunately. A little bit of a miss on the open net there. Mm -hmm. Ball being cleared by T area. Big Red Esser is going to flip it up here, pass it off to Fidizzle. Ball appears to be just keeping itself in the air. No one's really taking it to either side right now, but Zerx is looking to do something. Rickmus taking just it off the uh, trying to get it off the side. Oh, yep. Oh, that no. Right off the backboard. That might be a goal. That's gonna go in That's again for goal. Big Red Huskers. Bears Ford with their fifth goal of the game. Looks like everything that T Area Three here is trying to do is uh, just failing in an extent. They're trying to get that ball off their half of the uh, field here, and. Beresford just keeps sending it back. They're being relentless. They're not Beres letting them have any room here, it looks like. They are they are hitting them with the big no you. You want to get this out of your <laughs> yeah. side of the the goal? Nope. Oh, no! And that There's looks like it's going to be an Beresford. own goal, almost, if I see that correctly. Oh. Zerch just accidentally tapping it into the goal. Not quite able to clear it outside of the box. Really unfortunate. unfortunate. Yep. Two minutes remaining on the clock here. Tiaria High School. You know, they probably are not able to mount a comeback here to score six goals in two minutes. However, what they can do is get a couple goals in off the start of this game to, you know, make a stronger... S make a stronger sewing for the rest of the series to get that momentum up, but... I, I try to say anything. Rickmus has a... Wide open net there for him to take and take a hold of and capitalize on. Yeah, before you can even get that sentence out, they just score again and again and again. <laughs> it's looking like this first match is going pretty one-sided here, but it is a best of five, so they do still have a really good shot at taking these next few matches. Uh, still a chance in this match, uh, albeit uh, very hard to come back here. <laughs> Ferris Ford with another nope. goal. Yep, that is very unfortunate. Not able to clear that one. PJ accidentally misses. That. Yep. So unfortunate well, for the area here. I'd like to see right. them try to get a little bit of a comeback in this first match to maybe start getting their groove ready for that next match, as I said. Uh, hopefully um, using this first match as a bit of a uh, testing grounds, trying to get that momentum back for them for this next match. 100%. Still about a minute 30 left on the clock. Ooh! Center goes down. No one's there to uh, put the ball in for them. Zerx really clears nice it back towards the no center. Let's see. Ah, uh, desperately trying to get the ball out of their area. T area. So it's one in goal. Oh. The relentless offense of Beresford. Yep. There is nothing they could do there. There's one person two people that are directly with inside the goal box, but Ferris Ford is continually finding a way to make it work and get the ball inside of the goal. It looks like TPJ tried to go for that block and just slightly got a little bit of a miss, I think. Uh, might have been bumped out of the way as well. Uh, it's very close to the block. All right, P. Dizzle taking it up and off the wall, here. taking it to center. That's a wide oh. open goal. That should be an easy one there. Nice he just scores yet another one. Very clean. Fortunately, T area was not able to get it off the bounce down. And it's going to be another goal for Bears 4 team Verocity. Seems like Bears 4 is really uh, has confidence in controlling this guys with all these aerial plays that they're pulling off. Uh, and it's making it a little bit challenging for uh, T area to get up into that uh, domain along with Bears 4 to kind of counter the nice block. As they say in DJ Warfare, sure it's uh, crucial to have the air advantage, and Beresford getting a demo ha absolutely has this air advantage, being able to take it off the top and basically plunge it down into the uh, T area's goal on multiple occasions thus far. Just fighting to get it out of that corner, trying to uh, T area as much as possible, just get it out of their side of the field here. Being denied constantly. Oh, Ooh, almost making it, it in, touch. but not quite. And the game number one will tee out as Bears for Team Verocity takes the lead with a 10-0. Really, really, really solid lead here. 
a substantial lead um, by Beresford. Zero points for T area so far. Uh, hopefully this next match, as we stated, best of five. Hopefully they can come back in these uh, uh, next few matches here. I agree as well. Hopefully it goes much better here for T area high school number three. Alrighty, and as we transition back into game number two, we are here, we are ready to see if T-Area can mount a comeback against the ever-so-pressing onslaught of Bears 4 Team Brossi. Oh, dribbling it on here, pops it up over T-Area. P-Dizzle taking it, gonna try and center it here for his teammates, not quite able to though. <laughs> Saved by the side of T-Area, and oh. wow, goodness, that two people in the goal? Not quite able Not to... Not the star we wanted to see. <laughs> no, yeah, complete domination there. There's two people in the goal, and they weren't able to block the shot by P-Dizzle, which is really unfortunate. 20 Bears seconds for the just match. finding that uh, thread for the needle there every single yeah. <laughs> moment they have. <laughs> unfortunately, uh, yeah, they should have uh, probably boosted a little bit higher if they wanted to be able to get the save. But uh, already, Bears for oh. taking it into their side, and like Miss Prime scoring... Second goal of the game, and his first goal of game number two. We, almost, we see um, Zerts here almost blocks it, but I think he just kind of gets... Re um, I think Rick... I can't really see the name. Rick, Rick Prime. Prime. No, that's all good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Rick Miss Prime kind of retouches it and uh, slams it back down, dunks over his head, um, kind of predicting that touch from Zerts there, I believe. Let's see real quick. Going up into the skies again. As we see, T-Area still taking that grounded approach. Yeah, T-Area, if they really want to be able to match Beresford in the skies, they're going to need to start flying themselves. Oh, just barely Ooh. off the backboard, but it looks really close, and the P-Dizzle is able to... Offense. Oh, just barely able to tap it in there after the 1-2 wasn't able to quite make it in. As they say, 3 is a lucky number, and third time's the charm. Able to get that in there for Beresford. Just an absolute relentless onslaught from Beresford. Just one after another. If one person misses, the second one comes up. Second person misses, third person secures it. What a crazy amount of pressure from Beresford here. If not one, not two, Ooh. but three is there. Rekmus Prime with another goal, setting Beresford up 4-0 versus T area High School. Really nice goal here. Looks like a little bit of a flip reset, I think. I didn't realize there's baby Yoda player cards for Rocket League. That is interesting. <laughs> you looked at his uh, goalie score. Interesting. Just kind of carries the ball straight into the goal. Mm -hmm. Lives it to you on a silver platter saying, You asked for a goal, good sir? Mm, yes, right here. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you asked for it. Medium rare. area high school looking to get this ball out of their side on the courts but p dizzle is not there to answer unfortunately ball sitting about center field right now as rickmas prime takes it up with 100 percent boost uh, it's cleared there by t area heavily committing to that defense there it did work out they did not score it was very good Ooh, a demo Ooh. there onto zerk it's gonna be much harder for them to defend here if he doesn't get back up in time it's like he is able to get back Centered again for Bears Ford. That might be a goal. That is for P. Dizzle. I can't even keep track of how many goals he scored this game. I think it's been three thus far. But a little tap in there from the side of him. Ben09 not quite able to make the save. Just a little bit higher and he would have been able to clear it. Once again, it's a lot of that, you know, those little pop-ups. It seems like T-Area is taking that much more grounded approach. Those little pop-ups seem to be getting through T-Area 3's defense here. Um making it quite hard to kind of get up above uh, when they get shot. Popped up right above their head to the goal. Um, with just the relentless teamwork that uh, Beresford is showcasing here. Yep, they have the rotations. They have the, the one, two, three bop into the goal as they saw from one of the previous goals. There's just <laughs> They just have a lot of options here for being able to score against the area. And once again, just yep. one after another, one after another. See, one T-Area player hits the ball, tries to get it out, and there's always a Beresford player ready to counter that hit. Uh, they are very well coordinated, it seems. And as expected from one of our uh, top teams here, I believe. Yep. 
Alrighty, I'm going to let Ethan here uh, carry on with the broadcast real quick. Though we're having a little bit of a streaming issue. All right, no worries. Key area still relentlessly trying to get it off their side of the field. Looks like a little bit of a success there, uh, getting it past half. Uh, Beresford just pushing it back. Off the wall, looks like Beresford trying to center it for a shot. No one able to follow up. T area does clear the ball. Gets it back on the Bear side's uh, field here. Looks like we're going up for a touch, slightly missing. TJ coming in. Beresford ready to counter any hit that they throw. Ooh, almost a nice setup from Beresford. They're catching the ball. A lot of Beresford trying to catch the ball and control the ball uh, and go for a lot of these setup plays, it seems. Tieria is still trying to clear it. No one in net. Might be a goal. Ooh, great save from uh, Ben09. They are able to clear it again, just slightly missing, popping it up. Juice one of the Bearsfield players here a little bit. Looks like T area does have control of the ball for the moment. They might be able to clear it here. They get it clear onto the other side of the field. Beresford once again, just ready for that response. Alrighty, there off we go. the wall, trying to center it for Zerks, I believe, and that is a goal. P Dizzle, I believe, actually scored. Sarks the wrong team, my bad. <laughs> doing great teamwork. Centers it for P. Dizzle. P. Dizzle just slams it home. Not a lot that T. Area could do there. Uh, they just kind of need to contest those players that are being set up. Uh, I feel like they're very focused on committing to that ball, and when all three of them are committed to that ball, it seems like they're not really looking for those other players that are kind of the ones that are the true uh, ones that are going to be scoring, perhaps. Alrighty, sorry about that. We have now returned. The streaming issues are all fixed. Thanks for being patient with me there. Alright, 30 seconds remaining now on this game. Bears Ford Veracity up 7-0 versus Tierra High School 3. Tierra High School just not quite able to get the ball out of their end zone almost at any point during this game. However, Bears Ford is down uh, against their previous number of goals, so their defense has gotten a bit stronger compared to game one. So, as we go look into this next game, uh, it's going to be up to T-Area High School to be able to mount a stronger defense and possibly start the next game with a goal. Yeah, and T-Area High School is really, uh, you know, they do still have that chance to come back, like we said, but as from what we've seen, you know, unwilling or unable to get one goal in both of these matches is not looking great uh, for T-Area High School, but they do still have a chance to come back with this best of five. And we have a slight break here. Uh, have we uh, explained Rocket League at all? Would you like to explain Rocket League? Anyone um, seen man, I mean, <laughs> if you haven't quite been able to witness uh, the game that's currently been unfolding before us, uh, quite literally two words, uh, car soccer. Um, yep, here as we get into uh, game, game number three. Bears Ford, Ferocity up with a 2-0 lead right now game-wise versus T-Area High School. That'll be match point for them. So, um, I guess going back to the Rocket League points, uh, yeah, it's soccer, but you play it with cars. Very nice, very easy to understand. They have rockets strapped on the back, there you go. <laughs> Let the, this is definitely an OSHA violation, I don't know. Some sort of, like, <laughs> for sure, for sure. Federal Agency of Transportation, they have got to be all over this. People know, driving maybe, these maybe cars this is taking must be a place in severe in a, pain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who are the drivers of these cars? They, they've got to be, they make the Stig look... Like a normal guy just driving down the 709. Oh yeah. All right. Let's see here it as like, uh, mistakes are actually putting up a pretty good offense here. It seems it's been on Bearsfield's side of the field here for quite some time. As I say that, I you might have jinxed it. it. They yeah. <laughs> immediately clear it off of their side. However, though, it has been a whole it. minute. <laughs> okay, I think I'm not gonna. Yeah, so maybe we I should just I'll, not... I'll stop uh, jinxing it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're we're going to keep jinxing it. Uh, yeah. that's, that's not good. We should just not mention that part. Yeah. Um, I would like to see T-Area here kind of take one of these matches so we have a little bit uh, more of a back and forth. Love to see these teams kind of go back and forth a little bit more. Ooh, we will there is field that winning that uh, tip off there. There's only one minute. I'm, I'm going to stop speaking. 
That is really unfortunate. <laughs> Rick miss. Once again. Yep. Rick miss with those little, those little bitty pop-up goals you see here. He just slightly taps it up and sends one of the T area players flying past the ball. Uh, completely missing. It's those little bitty uh, redirections that are kind of catching T area here. And Barrisfield seemed to be doing a really good job at uh, abusing that weakness, it seems. Right, looks like Tiaria able to send it at least into their side, but uh, Beresford is responding here in full force with oh. Pedizel scoring a goal to send Beresford up 3-0. I believe that was PJ there just getting bullied in the goal here. One of uh, yeah, he's, ah, one of the Bar all right, I was Ben 09. One of the Beresford players just bullying the goalie, giving him no chance to try to uh, stop that goal there. That feels so bad. Really unfortunate. A little, bit there. Of a, a little bit of a fake in the tip off here. Looks like Rickmas looking to center it here for one of his teammates. First on the rotation. Well, Pete will be able to answer. Yes, he will. Once that again, Rickmas just getting perfect centers for Pete Dizzle. It's just the, it's just the assist, assist master. <laughs> assist Set it up. master, indeed. White literally <laughs> hands off Silver Platter once again. Would you like this goal, good sir? Mm, yes, I would. Thank you very much. Hey, the ones that the ones that get those assists are, are very valuable too. You know, that's the, <laughs> the those are those player. setup players. P. Dizzle wouldn't be making these goals without the tremendous effort from uh, Rickness here. All right, looks like Barris Ford is attempting to get it out of their side and back into T areas, but T area is trying to ensure that. Once again, that the possession stays outside of their goal, but Rickmas says, Oh, no, you don't. For a snipe. <laughs> Rickmas says, I heard you guys talk about how I'm getting a lot of assists, and he says, No, I can score too. He just comes in and slams in a goal. A solid dunk straight down in there. Alrighty. I was going to try to mention uh, Beresford's defensive player, it seems, to their goalie, but uh, I don't quite know how to say that name, so we're just going to avoid saying it for me. That's. <laughs> Oh, it's just big red go Huskers. That's a uh, Nebraska team. <laughs> with the with the uh, with the blurry, I couldn't quite see the name there. Big yeah, so red I'll go the, uh, Huskers. I'll fix we'll the big for you, uh, after the series. <laughs> no worries there. Ball high up in the sky here, looking to be cleared by a go Huskers. Missed there from P Dizzle. T area able to keep it within Ferris Ford's side of play here. But Beresford will say no as they knock it on a T area side. Oh, uh, once again with these. Rickmas Prime here, Ooh. accidentally pinching it in the side of the goal, not able to get it directly in. Goes out to get some boost. Zerk's looking to clear it here, getting it onto Bear's sides of the field. Let's get a successful clear for the meantime. Alrighty there, Rickmas Prime, not able to get to center, but P Dizzle there, getting it directly there for. Oh, and he oh. pops it off of his teammate by accident. <laughs> Oh, uh, Tierra is looking here. to score! T and PJ is there for the first goal for T area High School Rocket League this series. Love to see it, love to see it. T area gets their first goal here. It's only 1 to 5. There's still a minute and 53 seconds on the clock. Definitely enough time in Rocket League uh, to have a comeback here and beat Barrasaur, but they're going to have to really tighten up their gameplay and kind of reproduce what they just did there. Um, 100%. They're showing that their mental is not breaking. They are there. They have this steadfast presence. And they are ready to come here and play and hopefully try and finish out this series as strong as they possibly can. But, Rickmas Prime. Oh. No one's in that goal there when they need it the most. Unfortunately, the rotations just don't quite seem to be there for T-Area. See? Ah, uh, just not and high as up there. Mentioning it, all three players trying to go for that ball there kind of caught some of them out of position, it seemed. Uh, leaving nobody ready for that kind of uh, pass to center and then shot from the Minute 30 remaining. Go oh, Hoskins, a high crazy one. aerial. Ooh! Oh. Almost dunks it right in the goal there. Yes, sir. As it goes into T area's side here. Trying to get no it clear here by Mr. Ben09. Rickmas going for the center. Oh, cleared there by T area. Ooh, tier and nice clear by T area. He is uh, centering it. No one to follow up from Barrisfield. Or Barrisford, sorry. Have I been saying Barrisfield? 
I, I, I might have. Last I don't know. Oh, <laughs> That's Lots all of good. Bears very hard. Bears four, yeah. Bears field. Yep. Close enough. Alrighty. 40 seconds here remaining on the clock. Looks like uh, Reckless Prime Rick with a Prime. huge Ooh. aerial. Not quite able to get that there. Oh! 2v3 there momentarily as PJ demos. That could be what T-Area needs to try to get a little bit of a comeback here, but the time is running out on the clock. T-Area needs to make something happen very soon if they stand a chance um, at catching up in the goal lead here. PJ's Almost all kind of keeping it remaining. in the corner. 10 seconds now remaining on the clock. Bears Ford, Team Brosity up 6-1 to one versus T-Area High School. This looks like it might be a shutout here. 3-0. Bears for Team Veracity taking match number three here of Rocket League at the Fenwick, South Dakota Esports State Tournament. Alrighty. Well, uh, thank you guys for watching the first series. Uh, we will have a short break here as we load up match number six between Aberdeen Eagles Rockets and Sioux Falls Red Team. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll catch you in a second.
everybody, and welcome back to the second match here in our Rocket League side of the tournament. We have Aberdeen Eagles Rockets versus the Sioux Falls Red Team here. Uh, both of these teams have uh, pretty similar uh, records as far as their, both of their seasons went. So it'll be exciting to see uh, how both of them do. However, the moment that I decide to say that, looks like Sioux Falls will say... I want to take a 1-0 lead here as uh, Kipo is able to, uh, oh sorry, Grizz is able to score the first goal here 15 seconds in. It seems like we got to limit what we talk about here because we keep jinxing I, it's these It's the caster curse. Like, it's, it always happens it, regardless it the caster of curse. what you're doing. Yep. It's, it's really unfortunate, but you know what? You know, we're here to stay, <laughs> at least for the duration of the tournament, <laughs> so should not be too bad, hopefully. Sioux Falls on the aggressive push here. Already putting up a lot of uh, a lot of countermeasures here, trying to desperately clear it from their side of the field. Um, ooh, a little bit of a center from Sioux Falls will not go through as Aberdeen clears it out. It's like we're seeing a lot of trades back and forth between um, it being cleared and Sioux Falls just slamming it back onto their side of the field. It seems like Sioux Falls always has that one extra player ready to uh, respond to those clears there. Aberdeen yeah, getting a little bit grouped up here, it looks like. Grizz looking to take it off the top here. Centering it there for Kipo. Sent away by Sioux Falls red team. Dax there with the save, gets it out. Blue block able Ooh, to get nice it out to midfield. Up. Even here on the side as Pry gets demoed there by Dax. Preblord. A lot of pressure for Aberdeen here. Oh, oh, that Ooh. was slow. That Ooh. one just barely came up on the side there. Very Great unfortunate. And very needed clear for Aberdeen here. And a little bit too close there with that goal. Alrighty, Falls, is, uh... Uh, Pry taking it off the uh, wall here. Bringing it back down, looking to clear, getting it towards center field. Ooh, really nice Nicely setup. centered for Kreblord. Grizz looking to take it back. Will they be able to defend this? Easy to block away by Lou Block. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> Keep. <laughs> Keep going Keep trying to control the ball out of the corner. <laughs> yep. Ooh, right over one of the defenders' heads, but the second one is able to block that. Make sure oh, that they dude. cannot score it. Looking like a lot more of a competitive match here. Uh, both teams kind of back and forth. Sioux Falls yep. did get that really nice early lead, which is going to be great for them here. Yeah, they just said, Yo, we heard you like Rocket League. <laughs> Here's a goal. Hope it tastes good, man. But for the rest all, of this match, it's been uh, super back and forth. Yeah, for sure. All Sioux Falls has to do here is just kind of run out the clock at this point, right? they got to keep their defense up and run out the clock, and they will eventually kind of take this first match. So it's yeah. definitely more pressure on Aberdeen to kind of make that first move or make a move in general here. Although Sioux Falls looks like they want to take two goals. They don't want to play defensive. Being able to get a 2-0 lead would make it easier in case, you know, Aberdeen is able to slip in a last-second goal to prevent it from going to overtime. So, so... Oh, well... Oh! Cast As <laughs> if... <laughs> we need... <laughs> All right. The moment we talk Everything about something, it shall occur. As Kipo Rocket League is able to just get a super easy tap in there, as nobody from Aberdeen Eagles is able to, I guess, basically match the goal and be there presently for it. Just for fairness, I'm going to say I think Aberdeen's going to get two goals here, just yeah, so well, maybe I, we cast or curse that to happen. Manifesting an overtime. There. We're going to manifest, yeah, manifest that overtime. now. Just to keep yep. the fairness, you know, we're going to manifest that. Of course, that. yeah. <laughs> All right. Here as uh, Dax looking to send it back towards the center of the field. Clears it a little bit. Center there from Cry. Lovely save by Kreblor, preventing a nice goal there from Sioux Falls. Oh, oh no! Two people! Both players, Dax and uh, Kreblor, just barely missing it there. Yeah. Oh, so unfortunate. Both committing to it, and I think they might have actually bumped into each other there. Yep, it's a. Uh, oh, sorry, let me scooch right past you there. <laughs> a little bit of a miscommunication, it seems. Yep. Sioux Falls winning the uh, tip off. Oh. 
and a smooth four zero lead for two. I don't know what to say at this point. No, I, 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 I mean, I, uh, yeah. Aberdeen's gonna score four more. That's the caster curse. There, there. We're gonna do that. Two falls, just to able to get the momentum that they need there off of the uh, the goal going up 2-0, then being able to sink basically two following goals within the very next minute. Uh, they're looking on fire here for the course of the latter half of this game one. Aberdeen's gonna need to. Oh wow, man! Aberdeen's Huge really gonna need to bring here. it back. It was a really close match for those first uh, three minutes there that I think we had. Mm -hmm. uh, but minus that one early goal from Sioux Falls, it looked like it could have been just a slight mistake. But now Sioux Falls just scoring four more, getting a total of five here, and Aberdeen unable to get one so far. Yep, it's been a complete shutout. Yep. There's another goal for Sioux Falls. Aberdeen still at uh, zero here. A minute left on the clock. It's going to be very hard to make this match specifically come back, but we are in a best of five, so, you know, use this match to try to feel out your opponents, try to figure out a way to counter them in this next match is what I would do personally. Mm -hmm. Feel it out. You know, don't let the mental take you too hard. It's just game one. We still got two more to be able to pull off something. You know, even if game two gets dropped, easy reverse sweep. We win those. Not too bad. It does happen. It does happen. Mm -hmm. Plenty of times. Almost 30 seconds here remaining on the clock. Looks like Kreblord's looking to try and clear it there. We'll get it back into uh, Sioux Falls Gold, my bad. Gets up, ends up getting demoed by Pry. And Grizz oh. is able to take a simple goal there, making that lucky number seven versus Aberdeen zero. And it's funny that you say lucky number seven because it did almost seem lucky. Look at that absolute. That is oh, that's <laughs> robbery. That's robbery. Yeah, man. <laughs> Tried to tip it out, but it's just not good enough. <clears throat> Kickoff going off here. Going into the side corner here of Aberdeen's pocket. Looking to get it back towards the center. A little bit of a demo there. Aberdeen down a player currently. Alrighty, five seconds is about to make Ooh. itself up here. Taking it's it off the wall in the air for one last, still get one, more. one last tango. Oh, they're not letting it tick down just yet. Are they able to score a goal off this? Clear here. Oh, <laughs> Sioux Falls <laughs> not letting the ball fall. It's probably going to go down here. Oh. Alrighty, and Sioux Falls takes game one, 7-0 versus Aberdeen. That was Two balls really looking like they wanted that uh, that eighth goal there. They did not want to let that ball drop. Mm -hmm. That was a what looked like a very sort of neck and neck game outside of the early 15 second goal, but pretty much after that second goal was then scored, uh, Sioux Falls just absolutely ran with it and said, "You know what? I'm g't take six uh, five more bro, making a 7 0 lead. So Aberdeen's well, going to need to... Really, really took it and ran with it there at the end. That was a, mm -hmm. a huge uh, momentum gain. Yep, they're going to be liking that feeling moving into game number two here as Sioux Falls is now 1-0 up over Aberdeen Rocket Eagles. Eagles Rockets, hold up. So we're just gonna... I'm Aberdeen here. You know, I want to get that nice mental reset. It's 0 0. We're on match two. We still have a chance, but that is not what we want going into the first nope. like 15 seconds here. So it's okay. Uh, it's just going to be Aberdeen. a pattern. They're just going to go up 1 0 early. <laughs> they did it in the last game. It's simple as that, right? Yeah, and we're going to have a really close match for the rest of the match. That's right. <laughs> 100%. We're, we're going to stop them here for, if we're Aberdeen here. Yep, that is exactly what we're going to manifest. Straight kickoff there coming from Dax. Looks like Aberdeen Grizz trying to... Just going flying. Yeah, Sioux Falls really trying to fly in there and get it into Aberdeen's Eagles goals. Nice block away there from Aberdeen. It looks like they're trying to get a center here on Sioux Falls goal Ooh. and get saved there by Grizz, though. But Dax isn't done. He's trying to get a center. Not able to deny the push off. Looks like Kibo's going to take it into the uh, side of Aberdeen here as Prize not quite able to get there the uh, shot on goal and make it in. But Grizz says... Let me in there, coach. Centers it for his team. Pry knocks off the backboard there. there. Little yep, a little bit too high. Kipo going again there for the center. Knocked away nicely by the defense of Aberdeen. But Pry, the relentless offense here from Sioux Falls, trying to Oof. get it in. 
find that opening. Aberdeen is putting up a great defense, but they are just relentless with this offense here. Mm-hmm. Oh, even to add insult to injury, there's a demo there coming up from Kipo. And another demo! Oh my goodness! Oh my well, God. if you can't get it in, blow up two of their cars and there's only, it's a one versus three. Good luck, have fun. Not much he can do here at a one versus three. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> almost unfair. Yeah. Pry with a goal, sending Sioux Falls red team up 2-0 versus Aberdeen Eagles Rockets. Yeah, Sioux Falls definitely has a tempo here with that relentless offense uh, on Aberdeen. Aberdeen was putting up actually a really good defense there. They kept denying those shots, but yep. eventually you're going to fall and eventually you're going to make a slip up. You got to get it cleared out eventually. Yep. Well, we'd love to see that, though, from Aberdeen. They are playing their hearts out right now. They will say, you shall not pass into good my goal. Clear. What's up? They had a good clear there. Uh, oh, yeah. Kind of true, it true. Back. Yep, Finally getting it off their side of the field here. Kipo looking to get it centered here for his team. Able to respond. Oh, a double tap off the backboard by Pry. Very nice control there to ensure that he's able to get that goal. Take a look at that. It really seems like the only way they can oh, the defend this is just if they kind of got up on that back wall there to try to block Ooh. that. Or try nice. to block the passer there, maybe. Uh, I'm not too sure there. Kind of floating. Seems like a really rough goal to block. Alrighty, center field here. For both teams pretty neutral right now. But South Dakota looks to go on the attack here towards Aberdeen's goal yet again. Kreblord looking for the clear. However, it's centered by Pry. Oh, tries to get it with the backspin, but not good enough. Riz going here for the center. Looks like it's saved by Kreblord. Oh. Just weaving oh. through their defenses. That is Epo another says, goal for Sioux Falls. 4 0. Mm -hmm. Still 2 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock, though. Definitely uh, doable for Aberdeen. That is plenty of time for Rocket League. Um, they might have to try a little bit of a shift in their play, trying to go for more of those aggressive plays, maybe trying to take out the people who are trying to center it, um, and trying to get themselves on that offensive foot a little bit there. Possession inside of either side is definitely leaning towards the favor of Sioux Falls. Um, yeah, definitely going to need to be able to kick it out and stay out of uh, their own side and try and get it more on the side of Sioux Falls. But once again, Sioux Falls is just not going to let that happen oh. as Pry scores yet another goal on his fourth of the game now, I believe. And we can see Dax here actually kind of going for what I was mentioning, trying to take out those uh, people who are setting up those center plays. Because if you can take them out at that front, they can't get the center. They can't get, uh, get that goal, basically. Um, did attempt it. Looks like he just wasn't quite able to kind of stop that center. Gaberty with a little bit of possession here. Gets completely denied by Grizz. Oof, Grizz with a center instantly denied by Aberdeen. Aberdeen getting a little bit of a clear here. Riz trying to stop it. it is on Sioux Falls side of the uh, court here, but they do have possession. Not much uh, Aberdeen's going to be able to do with it here. Looks like uh, yeah. trying to get Ooh. it there onto South Dakota side, but nope. Sioux Falls says uh, South Dakota side. All of them are in South Dakota, by the way. <laughs> this is the yeah, South Dakota Sioux Dakota. Falls, Sioux Falls. <laughs> yeah, Sioux Falls. I think it's Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Is. Oh, a little bit of an open net here. If they could get it centered and get a shot on goal here, possibly a little bit too high. Nope. Sioux Falls is able to clear it out. Clock's running down, a minute left. We need five goals from Aberdeen, and Sioux Falls just slams in the six goal. Uh, actually, six goals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> or actually, as soon as I say something, they gotta correct me. Yeah. Gotta... <laughs> Sad. That's all good. <laughs> And Aberdeen will still have a chance after this match. As said, for that reverse sweep, we did say it earlier. The reverse sweep is possible. This was a little flick there almost from, uh, from Pry. That was fancy. Seen some fancy Sir. car movement from uh, Sioux Falls here. Just great style center. points at this point. They know right, they have a lead that's worth keeping. Just right. a relentless amount of pressure. 
absolute barrage here from uh, Sioux Falls. Going up 7-0 here in game number two. I believe that's the... Did they have seven goals last game? I can't remember exactly the, uh, the score line there. Mm, I believe so. Looks I believe like, they were at seven. Right. They got that one last ball right at the end. So if they get eight here, they could top their uh, previous round. Personal best. Yeah, for this uh, series at least. just denying that uh, entry to their side of the field here. Seems like it's just a battle for Aberdeen to just get it off their side of the field, and it, for Sioux Falls, it's just kind of uh, just a battle to get that goal, right? It's, uh, it's constantly on Aberdeen's side of the field. Sir, and as the ball falls, Sioux Falls red team will take game number two with seven points to Aberdeen Eagles Rocket zero. GG's, and we'll see you on match points for the Sioux Falls red team. Yeah, looks like a another absolutely dominating performance by uh, Sioux Falls Red Team. I mean, they're just... I mean, Aberdeen needs to kind of get off that defensive foot. They're doing actually a pretty good job with that defense, it seems, like I was mentioning. They're constantly trying to deny those shots, but eventually if we keep letting them take those shots, one of them is going to go in, right? It's uh, like we can't be perfect just... forever. <laughs> It's kind of like you're just getting continuously hit by a mosquito until you just finally slap yourself and you hurt yourself. It's like, oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> now they, they're finally able to just get the goal in after Ooh, nice uh, continuously hitting them. Yep. Yeah. All right. Game number three here. Best of five. Sioux Falls red team looks to take this series 3-0 with a quite a commanding fashion here against Aberdeen Eagles Rockets. We shall see. The first 15 seconds have ticked by without their, you know, their, their previous goal that they've been able to get uh, each of the times. Goal. And <laughs> for a twist of fate, uh, Aberdeen has actually been keeping the ball relatively in control against them. However, uh, Sioux Falls looks to disprove me on that statement. As what a I... great center. Mm -hmm. That yeah, he was very well takes done. it up here on the wall, almost kind of pinches it off the wall perfectly to the center, kind of bounces yep. back. Silver flatter action. Perfectly handed to goal. Keep up. Yes, sir. And there was their first it. goal. A little bit, it took them a little bit longer to get that first goal this time. You know, maybe that's a sign. <laughs> yep. Going off the top of the backboard there. Ah, Just it looks like... Top part goals. Yep. They weren't quite able to get up there high enough to be able to defend it. And uh, right as you see it, Kipo Rocket League able to get that goal for Sioux Falls Red. Might be a little bit of a boost control uh, angle as well for Sioux Falls. It looks like Dax didn't have any boost available to actually get up higher there while he was in goal. I believe uh, Lulu Block was their only uh, player with boost available. Very and true. He just wasn't quite able to get up there. So Sioux Falls might actually be controlling a lot of these boosts. Um, keeping it to where Aberdeen can't actually you know, contend. True, yeah. Uh, those who controls the boost controls the skies, and them just being able to have such a dominant performance over on their side. I mean, they have the potential to steal as much boost as they want. As they are keeping it in their side of the goal. Almost looks like an open net, but... It have been a really nice there we go. too, and it's another goal for uh, Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. Right there, coming out from Pry. Side field, just thinking it in nice and easy. All right, minute and a half left, roughly. Sioux Falls Team Red is able to uh, be up 3-0 right now. Aberdeen really, really needs like to make Aberdeen's a play here. Kind of, yeah, it seems like Aberdeen's kind of doing the uh, same plays that they've been doing, trying to just constantly like have three players back, trying to get that ball out as much as they can. Um, I'm not sure what they would change, but I would like to see some sort of a change. Obviously, what we're doing currently isn't working too much. So trying to switch up our plays just a little bit, trying to, you know, throw off Sioux Falls. Ooh, almost set up for Pry actually to uh, get that goal there. Yep, as Kipo's looking to bring it in. Pry looking to center here. Getting knocked away, though, by Aberdeen. Taking it from the sky, and that's an easy goal there for Kipo. Getting nice and centered for him. 
super chill. Yeah, Everybody really seems to have these uh, goals from up top like, really well down. Pride is setting up Keepa once again, kind of from above, making it really hard for uh, Aberdeen to block that there. Mm -hmm. And right, as mentioned fine. prior, as Dax was attempting to uh, on one of those prior plays as well, trying to stop those players. Ooh. Saved by Crep Lord. the goal right off the bat. <laughs> yep. Saved by Crep Lord indeed. Uh, trying to stop those players from getting those centers and setups. Oh! Because once they get those setups, it seems nearly impossible to stop the actual shot. Mm -hmm. Luke Walker taking it up and away. By Luke Walker. Kipo looking to take it to the skies here. See what work he can get done. Not much though, but Grizz says it's my turn. Taking it into the corner of Aberdeen's. Not able to quite center for his teammates. But Pry there is on the rotation. Oh. Oh, lovely Dax save there by Dax. Able to get back in time. It's like the ball like a lot of Aberdeen players are uh, a lot of Aberdeen players are really committing to the ball in certain points. Dax was just barely able to get back there. We have one player in net, it seems, just not able to stop that ball from going in. Going oh. Fifth goal for Sioux Falls Red. Very unfortunate there as Dax isn't quite able to match Pry in the air. The aerial prowess here of Sioux Falls Red showing through once again. You cannot match me in the skies, as they say, scoring their fifth goal. Bringing it right below two minutes here right now. Seems like so far that seems to be kind of a common occurrence between our teams that seem to be winning these matches here. Is, you know, a lot of ability to control the skies, like you mentioned. Whether that be taking the boost away from the enemy teams so that they can't go into the skies, or whether it just be uh, the decision to play in the skies for the yep. ability to as well. Oh, you know, the moment we talk about it, uh, probably just scores pretty much, uh, kind of just walks into their goal willy-nilly as he, as he pleases, <laughs> so. Yeah, never mind too much about that one, I bet. Yeah, Alrighty. it's not looking good here for Aberdeen, needing six goals in a minute and 40 seconds. Uh, yeah, I, is... I have seen it happen before, but it's going to be really rough. Mm -hmm. It's like Grizz there pinching it up, the easy center. Probably going there for the aerial, not able to go double, double tap off the backboard. Not another player. Not another player able to follow up off of that uh, recent. Uh, All right, Chris. Pinch just sent it a little bit too high. Sir, Kipo trying to get into Aberdeen's side of the field here. Looks like they are successful. And oh. another successful goal comes out off a light touch from Kipo. Nice redirection yeah, there. Really nice. And just barely able to get this touch. Just sends oh, it right over no. the That's so Hard sad. <laughs> I'd, I'd hate, man. I'd hate for that to happen. It's right above him. You're just like 5'11 like versus 6'1. He had six that foot. block. He had that block. <laughs> yeah. It's just that little bitty touch sends it, uh, misdirects it to where uh, he can't really correct his force at that point. Mm -hmm. 100%. Uh, One minute remaining mm -hmm. here. Sioux Falls up 7 0. And match point. They're looking to cinch their way here to the quarterfinals. On a quite a demanding victory against here, the Aberdeen Eagles Rockets. Like to mention at the start of that round, you know, we saw kind of Kreb Lord going for that kind of blocking that setup player, like I was mentioning before. It seems like it actually worked pretty well for them here. Uh, kind of stopped the play in its track, stop it before it even starts. Alrighty, Kipo saying, keep away from me. Going to go grab boost real quick. Grizz looking to get it centered. Blocked by Lou Block. This guy has been an absolute demon for uh, Sioux Falls Red to try and get past. That is Three of them in the goal, true, though. Lou Block doesn't uh, have any boost left. No, sir. Oh. Yeah, all three of them it's are really kind of just sitting to get in the goal. Without boost. Not able to uh, be there in position to defend against Grizz. And 8-0 here with 14 seconds left on the clock. It's looking that like constant uh, pressure. It's almost like they're getting corralled into their goal. It's almost like it's uh, they're being pushed back as uh, constantly. It's like their last line of defense every time, but it yep. uh, just doesn't work out without any boost there. All righty, and oh. that will be game here between Sioux Falls Red with a 3-0 lead over the Aberdeen Eagles. GGS here as we swap back over to the player cams. Alrighty, thank you everybody for watching that best of five with us. We will be back momentarily, hopefully about 15 minutes worth of time, to see match number nine between Dakota Valley Black and T-Area High School Rocket League first team. Uh, both of these teams seem 
Cats, who have done very well in the regular season, so hopefully it's an absolute banger. Thank you for watching, and we'll uh, take it from here.
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our third best of five here today at the Fenwork South Dakota Esports State Tournaments. I'm joined here once again by Coach Ethan, and we have our best of five already kicking off to a goal from Dakota Valley Black. These teams just keep not letting us get our intro. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Let me finish. It's well, like I'll in the middle of it. Word. It's like the uh, the anime person explaining his move, and he just gets shot by the other person already. All righty, let me finish. So, all righty, we have two teams here. We have Dakota Valley Black versus the T Area High School Rocket League Team Two, not Team Three, like we had earlier in our first best of five. You know, that was going to transition me right into my next talking point, talking about how Dakota Valley Black, out of the regular season from South Dakota, was the only undefeated team going 8-0 in all of their games. So, I mean, right out the gate, they're showing why. 2-0 up right now for this team. Yeah, the odds are definitely stacked against uh, T area here. <clears throat> but this is their uh, oh! two team. We have the T area <laughs> three here before another goal from uh, Dakota Valley. Oh my goodness. Showing that early game domination. Lord, alrighty. Leopard 3 absolutely pinning the ball in the goal there. As we go here, kickoff. Roughly only 30 seconds have technically passed so far. And 30 seconds, 3 goals. That's. Yep. We got a lot of time to make a comeback, but uh, as, I, as I mentioned, Dakota Valley that Black is open really net right early there. dominance. Leopard 3. The area 2 just did not have anyone in the net, it seems. It's no, that was a this. very major oversight from them. They need somebody on that rotation. Leopard is just able to pretty much just kick it down midfield and say, hey, here's a goal straight for us. 420 left on the clock. Nice. All right, looks like T area trying desperately to keep it towards center field. And if they can, inside of Dakota Valley Black side, but they're just not going to let that happen. Oh. Looks like two cars in going up here. And refuse to move. <laughs> Rule of <Yeah>. Rocket League. <laughs> bumping together. It's, oh, guess we have to press the forward arrow. Ooh, nice. Yep. They're, they're, they're the gentleman's code. They clear it's, into yeah. a goal. Yep. <laughs> they're still having that handshake over there in the corner. They, yeah. uh,. <laughs> They know the rules. <laughs> yep. So for those who are unaware, uh, if two cars accidentally bump into each other and they are stuck, it is obligatory to continually press the forward key until one of them is able to unlodge uh, themselves from the other. So a little bit of gentlemanly conduct currently happening right now as Dakota Valley Black up a commanding lead already at 3 minutes and 40 seconds. Uh, yeah, T Area High School is going to have to really sort of bring it back in this one for the first game to keep things competitive. AZ and B oh, looking to make that really goal. There. Mm -hmm. But Dakota Valley just blocking out that uh, aerial there, the T area was going for. Yeah. They slowing down the pace a little bit, trying to juice them out, it seems. I don't think we've uh, quite seen that from any of the other teams so far. A lot of the other teams going for like really fast, huge set plays, but uh, Dakota Valley is kind of slowing it down there, trying to juice them out. Keeping it nice and controlled. Yeah, that is uh, that is exactly what they need to do to keep this 5-0 lead. And Almost got area. sniped in. Yep, going off the backboard here. Easily centered, Leffert looking for the goal. Not quite able to go in. Cleared by AZ and B here. T-Bomber here looking for the save. Not able oh. to get it as Bri Bri knocks it right in. Brazil. Just bullied into that goal. Just bullied in. Look, it just pushes it in. Yeah. Two players versus one. He's just able to push past that defense there. That is very commanding gameplay there. I will the ball to go in the goal, and it shall. Seems <laughs> like T area trying to get an early control of the ball. Uh, Dakota Valley did actually contest it. Oh, that might be an open goal. Here. Never oh. mind. Right, right. Sending it away. Just so we think there. there's a chance. Alrighty, looks like it's going to be tempted to be centered here by Bri Bri. Left for going. Multi area players grouped up here. No one's really watching for those uh, other players on Dakota Valley. Mm -hmm. Rotations, rotations. Important to have 
people being able to cover all positions of the field so you're not caught lacking and three people are either sitting in the goal or too far up and making an easy goal for the enemy team. It's a good little clear here from uh, T area is able to kind of get it back to half field. So the Valor just pushing it back once again. Game has slowed Ooh. down significantly. So but far as T area has like been uh, mounting a stronger defense than they did during the earlier part of this game, which is really good to see, keeping things competitive. Gonna probably try to uh, take that into the next game, where they want to be able to dominate the field a bit more, and then hopefully take a game here off of Dakota Valley Black. Oh. ANZB just barely missing that uh, goal there, it looked like. He almost had that uh, that hit, I believe if he hit that, he probably would have gotten a goal there, it looked like. Dakota oh, Valley was actually center. very well prepared for it. Why would save? Oh, he's trying here for the double tap. But B Roy says Great no. Denial. Yeah. Swats it away. It's exactly what we were talking about in those other matches, kind of denying that setup play entirely instead of trying to block the actual shot from coming in. Uh, I believe Bomber there just kind of gets up above the goal and just denied them from that uh, goal there. Ah, uh, AZ and B not able to get the double tap off the backboard there. Ball is currently midfield, roughly. Ryby looking to bring it into T-Area side. Centered with Leffert there for this goal. Looks like he is not. Demo there on the tie night. Getting a 2v3 temporarily. D-Roy clearing it, but Ryby says no. Looking to get the ball centered for Dakota Valley. Tie night oh. not able to get it in. Oh, but Leffert says, <laughs> don't worry. Let me take a hand at this. And gets another There's goal. There's just always that next player ready to follow up on it. It's left exploding there in the air for so oh. long, and just that third player comes in. Great job there in teamwork from Dakota Valley Black to bring it up to seven goals versus zero for T Area Rocket League here in game one. Got about 10 seconds left on the clock. Um, yeah, an absolutely dominating performance by Dakota Valley Black. Seem to have quite a few of those uh, thus far, uh, this tournament. And one second remaining, trying to keep the ball up in the air. Not able to get the final goal. Dakota Valley taking game one 7 0 versus uh, T Area High School. Gonna return here to the player cams. And wow. Very unfortunate. Yeah. We have uh, pretty much Hoping seen. Hoping that some... they can uh, beat these other matches here. Kind of take it back in that best of five. Mm hmm, for sure. I mean. It's, we've sort of seen this uh, continually uh, throughout uh, our best of fives thus far, where we've seen uh, teams being able to sort of mount a strong defense for certain portions of the uh, game, you know, against some of the stronger seeded teams. However, eventually, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, armor, the armor starts to crack, and then eventually sort of it crumbles, and they're able to just get consecutive goals one after the other. It definitely does seem that way. I think uh, T area two though, in terms of like our other teams that are, they're kind of on that back foot. They did lose their first match. Uh, T area two does seem like they kind of have that better defense out of most of the teams that we've seen, kind of blocking those setup plays in total. Oh, very um, true. Instead of just trying to block the shots, right? We saw uh, one of the T area players kind of stopping that set play entirely, not even giving them a chance to kind of continue it. Uh, if we see more of that and maybe a little bit more of that spreading out, making sure our rotations are clean, um, we might actually kind of see a reverse here, a reversal here. Yes, sir. As we look to get into game number two here for Rocket League. We got five minutes, a fresh five minutes to play this game out. T area Rocket League saying, all right, let me at him again. We're going to go here fresh. Hopefully no goals scored. Never mind. I caster cursed it right away. Bri Bri saying, no, you. Taking it straight ah. into the goal there. Beautiful center by Leffert. Wow. It's every time. What are these signs? I know, I know man. It is really game. unfortunate. I just, <laughs> we got to just, just say nothing next time. I'll just mute my mic. I'll just mute my mic. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh uh, looks like we have yeah, some people leaving the match difficulty. here. Probably a an issue on something.
Everybody and welcome back. Sorry for the delay. We had some technical issues with the computers. One of them accidentally restarted. So, uh, to take you back to where we were previously, uh, we are now in game number two between Dakota Valley Black versus T Area High School Rocket League Team Two. Um, Dakota Valley Black currently with a one-game lead right now, and uh, yeah, we're at the Fenwick South Dakota State Tournament being hosted by South Dakota State University. Thank you very much for helping make this possible. Here we go. I forgot to do that in some of our previous best of fives. But yeah, huge shout out to uh, the Jackrabbits. They've done an amazing job setting up the stadium for us on the stuff that you see the player cams on and also all of the facilities that are allowing the students to play here today for the best teams in South Dakota that are the best in the Fenrich program as well. So thank you again. Yeah, I was, uh... <laughs> 
I was sitting on the edge of my seat waiting for you to get that through because, oh, oh, because uh, I was realizing that we actually, this is the first game that we haven't had a goal right off the bat in the first I know, seconds. I know, it's been a whole your intro. minute! <laughs> yeah, that mental reset is really benefiting t -area Rocket League right now. They are sort of just holding their ground saying, you will not pass yet again. However, so maybe they just needed that mental reset. Close. You know? <laughs> the net is open! And that is a goal for Leopard 3. All right, Dakota Valley does take the lead with one, but it did take a lot longer. There was a lot more back and forth this time here. So oh. hopefully we can kind of... Uh, All right, never Valley mind. They are looking to reset goal. the series, it looks like. Um, interesting. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, uh, All right. So uh, I guess for, um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so real quick, just to explain uh, what's happened real quick. Um, basically, uh, there was an agreement, mutual agreement between both Dakota Valley Black and Key Area High School Rocket League. Uh, just sort of say, hey, we had some tech issues last game. Let's reset the series. However, uh, this series, I'm sorry, this game uh, playing out relatively similarly to how last game went. A little bit less, uh, less so, but uh, Dakota Valley is still in the lead here with two goals. Roughly a minute and a half into the game. Yeah, you know, key area, you know, maybe, maybe just kick the computer and you know, restart it. If we start losing yeah. the game. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, no. I'm just <laughs> no, it will not happen. No, definitely not, definitely not. Yeah. All jokes, all jokes. <laughs> it's so good. All right. B Roy looking to get a clear here. AZMB kicking it towards the side of Dakota Valley in their pocket right now. Trying to get that clear. Leopard 3 able to get it. Going off the side here. That's probably an open goal, right? Yeah, that's that's no an open goal. A you take way a boost, too big no of an overcommit. Left. Oh my. Yeah, an overcommit by three here from T area. They really should have had at least one person staying behind to be the defender there. But hopefully Seems that's a lesson that they is kind of here. a common occurrence that we've been seeing with a lot of our teams that are kind of on that back foot in these games. Is that you know we're seeing a lot of players grouped up and a lot of over commits to kind of making a play happen and if it goes south they open, have no backup, open they goal have no here defense. oh fine i would save sorry about that Knight yeah just barely making it back yeah right right on the air trying to get the double tap Ooh. here oh beautiful <laughs> job right off the back wall and sends it right back in over his head mm -hmm. excellent really just oh, no chance for and... to actually block this Oh. He almost got up the back wall. If he got up the back wall and hit it off before it bounced back directly into uh, Dakota Valley's hand there, he might have been able to block that, but he was just a little bit too short. All right. As we see here, T looking to try and get this out of their area. Is he going to be missing the clear, but Bomber doesn't. Ty kicking it back into their side here. Looking to try and get it centered for his teammates. Bright Bright says, I'll do that. Oh, Leffert not able to get it into Ooh. the goal. AZ barely, looking away. barely. Almost no boost, though. Needs that boost. However, it is stolen by Leffert. Two players with no boost on each team here. Yep. It's like oh. they're running around trying to find that boost. Yep, yeah, where is it? <laughs> I need my boost! I need to make plays! This Dakota Valley seems like they're just controlling that boost. <laughs> We look on the left here, in the top left, there's just zero boost Center for field, all of the T area. B-Roy missing the dodge there. Oh, a nice save oh. by Bomber. Great save. Getting centered there by Bri Bri. Ah, oh. and I believe one of the teammates, unfortunately, was not able to convert that into a goal, even though beautiful center, though, regardless. T area all moving three and four together at once. Not able Thierry to get that area almost with that breakaway there. Almost able to get a point here. This game looking We're going to have to start seeing a point soon. A lot oh, more competitive right, right. Uh, from our previous oh. matches. And as oh, I say, uh, we're yeah. going to see a point soon. <laughs> it was the wrong team. Um, yeah. One minute, five up for Dakota Valley. Not looking good for T area, but much more competitive, as you mentioned. Uh, yes. Uh, they're definitely pushing back a lot more this uh, game here making a statement saying it was it was just a tech issues bro all right we swear we can we can take them on all right here's the balls getting yeah, centered is. straight over t's goal not able to convert that into a goal however uh getting kicked down midfield here by b-roy going up off to the side there bri bri looking in a similar position to get this goal oh. 
not quite able to bounce off to the side there. A, Z, and B getting it over to their side. Great save the area getting the ball centered for them. But Bri Bri, oh, this is just a, such an open net here. If Bri Bri can get it over. Ah, oh, Leffert not able to get the conversion there. Just Leffert wasn't able to get high enough there, it seemed. Oh, B Roy with the save. Clear here for T area. Bomber kicking it up and over. A, Z, and B not able to get the angle to send that straight into Dakota Valley's goal. Yeah, it looks like Dakota oh. Valley here. Not a lot of boost. They're probably going to take a reset here. Try to find some boost. T area also finding some boost here. Kind of stuck in the middle. Five seconds left. It's going to be ending out with Dakota Valley. Five and oh, it seems. Ooh, the ball is kept the in the air. Finally falls. Oof. Alrighty, there we go. Looks like they were trying to go for that oh and six there at the end. Yes, sir. So basically, the way this currently stacks out is we are now technically gone oh sorry done with only game one now that we've gotten past the tech issues um so dakota valley has a lead of one zero uh t area is going to look to bring this back in game number two um as we transition into our rocket league here we go you know, tech always being a little bit of a, a pain there to get to work sometimes but uh Luckily, it is working now. Hey, nothing, nothing will beat getting IP banned by Blizzard for Overwatch during our first state tournament that took hours <laughs> to fix. And the RAM issue yep. that basically prevented us from playing every game but Rocket League. So, honestly, all things said, oh, there we go. <laughs> T-Area on the board. Less than 15 seconds currently happening. That looks really awkward from Dakota Valley just trying to get that out there like, ah, ah, ah. Nope. I like to mention it. Not just T-Area getting a goal, but T-Area taking the lead of this game as well. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they can kind of continue that momentum here and just kind of uh, take match two. Really getting the first strike there. No runes, you know what I'm saying? All right. That was a big legend show. Uh, which is coming up next, by the way. Uh, roughly 3 p.m. Uh, that's the plug. Right, right. So we're casting Rocket League. No, oh, no we're League. Rock oh, League. oh, right, my bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this is I was really excited to cast League. It's been a while since I've actually gotten a chance to do that, so... <laughs> Alrighty, it looks like, yeah, <laughs> Titan Knight here. <laughs> For we now, are, cars, uh, rockets, and soccer. Yes, sir. Titan Knight getting an easy goal, just tapping it in nice and easy. For the side of Dakota Valley, bringing the score to 1-1. It is now tied with roughly a minute into the game. Yeah, T-Area definitely needs to kind of figure out what worked for them on that uh, first goal there. It definitely looked like it was a bit of a fumble for Dakota Valley on that first goal that uh, T-Area was able to, to secure. Um, but maybe that is enough to kind of, you know, get him shaking and kind of make more misplays on Dakota Valley's side, and hopefully T-Area can kind of capitalize on that. Don't jinx it, I swear. Oh! He just jinxed it. <laughs> come on, Ethan, come on! <laughs> yeah. In all fairness, you know, though, it, it looked well, really cool, right? I mean, look at him. It did look nice, yeah. Unfortunately, AZNB was not able to clear it out. He tried to get the angle, but unfortunately, Bri Bri was able to get that score. And it's now two points in the favor of Dakota Valley Black. Take it down here just under the first minutes. Looks like Dakota Valley is getting the early possession into the area side and is going to convert that into a very simple and easy goal. Yeah, they kind of took a, that 2-0 a lead, or a 2-point uh, lead here. They need to kind of, uh, T-Area definitely needs to lock this down. They cannot let them run away with more points. Uh, yep. We can't let them get that much of a lead as we did last time. Uh, T-Area definitely Where's the Where's the, where, where's the we coming from, bro? Blood thinks he's on the team. <laughs> hey, I'm on T-Area's <laughs> side. That's what <laughs> I'm on T-Area's team yeah, right now. I want to I want under, underdog defeat here, the comeback. Yeah, man, we love to see it. Hopefully, just hopefully, uh, they can get things cooking here. <laughs> Let them cook, as they say. Um, and B-Roy getting the full boost. Can you do something with it? Oh, kicking things on to uh, Dakota Valley side, but... Oh, no. Nope. Oh, uh, all the way not from, able to block the... Yeah, Dakota Valley scoring from actually their side of the field, getting kicked by Tina, as you can see. Soaring above everybody. Bomber not able to quite save that as it sails right past him and into the goal. Three minutes, Use 16 seconds for T -area remaining. Here. Yes, sir. Definitely enough time for T-Area to come back, for sure. Only Without down by doubt. three points, three minutes left. One goal per minute, definitely enough time to do that. Yep. 
I am super excited to see what these folks can cook up. I'm hoping because they're they're showing sparks, but they need to light a fire here under Dakota Valley to show them that hey, we're here to play, and uh, we're taking you down. Regardless, though, they're uh, they're doing a good job. They're keeping it inside of Dakota Valley's pocket right now. Keep it on their side as Leffert looks to keep it in the center. Nice tap there. Oh, but it's saved by B. Would have been a beautiful shot. Yeah, for real. B-Roy there, looking to get competitive with the ball, but it's slapped away by Bri, Bri looking to take it up and over again. Bri, Bri has had this angle so many times, are they able to convert it into a goal? But no, it is blocked by AZ and B. Great play there from T. Their defense has actually just gotten, they're, they're scaling, bro. Tenfold. I, don't, I know Tenfold. it doesn't exist in Rocket League, but their defense is scaling, bro. They have gotten higher in the air. They've been gotten more aggressive with being able to kick it back over to Dakota Valley's side. They're really showing that, hey, you're not going to have the entire tempo during this game. It's a great clear off the back wall from NZMB. There we go. Another clear Just back to center Just denied by Dakota Valley. Yes, sir. Ball currently centered. Bri Bri tried from the side again. Not quite able to make it work. <clears throat> if uh, I'm... Dakota Valley right now is just trying to keep things slow and steady. As you can see, eventually you'll find a hole in the wall. Looks like AZ and B and Bomber kind of overcommitted to the ball on that side, and B-Roy was only left alone to block against Ty Knight and Leopard. And, I mean, he was, looks like he was trying to cover for Ty Knight, but, uh, yeah, Leopard's just able to sink that one in for him, so good job on Dakota Valley. Lots of angles being uh, left open there for Dakota Valley to kind of get 100%. that uh, nice shot there. Numbers game. Two versus one, you don't always win them. Yeah, it's definitely difficult in that situation. <laughs> yes, sir. Can't block everything. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eventually, even stormtroopers, they're going to hit a shot, you know? <laughs> All right. All right, I think Dakota Valley's a bit better than stormtroopers. No, yeah, 100%. Here, right? <laughs> they, definitely have, they definitely have the accuracy of uh, American Sniper. They're, they're getting it in, and they're shooting straight. All right, looks like ball is trying to be taken out here from Dakota Valley's side, but AZMP knocks it right back in, almost close to the center. Ooh. Bomber looks to do so. It's coming off the backboard. Nice B-Roy looking to get something. Not quite able to tap the ball, and unfortunately, he probably ran out of boost. That denial by Ans B there was really good. Just mm -hmm. completely shutting down the player from even touching the ball. Instead of going for the ball itself, shuts down the player that is going for the ball on Dakota Valley's side. Yes, sir. All right, looking to get centered there. Ooh. Leffert keeping it shrimple. Just getting a score there off the side. Really nice Boom. and really fast kind of pass here to center. Oh, yep. Just one, two, done. It's easy peasy, lemon squeezy for them there. 42 seconds remain though. T area, Rocket League having a rough time trying to close this lead that they generated so early into the match. Dakota Valley Black Curly has a commanding 6-1 over them. They're going to need to really sort of uh, save up their stock, if you will, for uh, game number three here to either uh, try and pull off a reverse sweep. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, I might have mentioned, you know, just great, you know, kind of showing from both teams here. I mean, Dakota Valley is, I believe, our undefeated team in the like, kind of the Fenwork series here. So really good showing from T areas to team uh, to kind of kind of put up that fight. Uh, and try to stop a lot of this. You know, they're doing a pretty good job at stopping most of it, but as we mentioned, you know, eventually with the relentless onslaught of the offense of Dakota Valley, they're eventually going to get those points. Yeah. Uh, Ten seconds here. Almost going to run the clock down. We're going to have to see here if uh, Dakota Valley is going to attempt to try anything more here. Leffer bringing the ball up and over. Looks like Bri Bri is going to try sick. and get something off the sidewall here. They want to go for one more, it looks like. No, nope, not able to. Denied. Alrighty. Looks like game number two goes the way of Dakota Valley Black. They are sitting at match point now over T-Area High School Rocket League 2. As we ready up here for this next game. Hopefully, I'm crossing my fingers. There is no tech issues for this next game as we are now sort of sitting on the precipice of whether or not Dakota Valley will send themselves very comfortably into a semifinals position. I believe we see the uh, the signal of one more for one of the players. There is. <laughs> yeah, one more, baby. One more, and we are through to semis. Top four there. Alrighty, I'm going to transition over here to game number three. Dakota Valley looking ever so strong here. 
Bri, Bri I think Bri, Bri just loves kicking it up the right side wall. I've seen them do this move so much within the past three games that we have seen. Obviously, sure. game number Definitely three. Definitely practiced. Yep. Yeah, it's, I have your moves downloaded. Oh, so close. The area almost getting an early goal again. Darn, they really but they were on quite a good down. offense there. Oh. Alrighty. Oh, looks like trying AZ, ANZB trying to match the aerial there, but not quite able to do so. B-Roy, not able to get that as Tide Knight's able to get the save and sends it back over to area side. Ball looks to be centered here by Leffert. No one's there to catch the pass. Bri Bri looking once again to do the same center and do it themselves. No. Oh. Fortunately, the backboard says nope. We will not allow you to do so. That was a beautiful goal there from uh, Bri Bri. Yep, that would have been very nice looking. Definitely one for the montage reel. A little bit of a right, barrel roll. Right the... now. <laughs> Leffert looking to get an easy tap to the side, but B-Roy says no, sir. ANZB looking to challenge there for the goal, but fortunately uh, does not make contact with the ball. Pretty important to do just so. Really looks like, uh, just really looks like T-Area is putting in a lot of effort just to get it onto the other side. And then yep. they finally get up there and they're ready to start their offense, and it's just instantly denied. Usually by night, it seems, uh, immediately from Dakota Valley. Uh, so it's definitely just a lot of effort from T-Area here trying to push that ball back, trying to deny as many goals. And so far, we're doing pretty good. 0-0, zero, zero, three minutes, plenty of time. T-Area clearing the ball a little bit here. If they can get this pushed onto their side, they're trying to run with this here. If they can get a point here and take this lead, all they'll have to do is play defense for the rest of the time remaining to kind of take a match against Dakota Valley. Yeah, but Bri Bri looking to do just that! Oh, Easy. And just Didn't as, even as I say that. Ever. Yep. Just as I say that, Dakota Valley takes the lead 1-0 in this match. You know, I'm, I'm starting not to think I'm the caster curse. I'm starting to think it's you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it, it might be. The scores, it might it's be. Just, <laughs> unfortunate. Yep, yep. <laughs> they are only down one, though, and this is a actually great showing from what we've seen previously in these other matches. Yeah. Uh, only down one point with three minutes left. Definitely still doable in Rocket League. Yeah, bro. I mean, the story is so far that T, uh, T area Rocket League has been sort of ramping up their defense to being able to stop their shots and get it even over to their side in a more commanding display as A and Z B looks to center it there but none of his teammates are able to catch it for him. Ooh. Leffert getting really high up there in the arena. Trying to get those big aerials out. Full boost for B-Roy trying to tap it off to the side. Center for his teammates. Center. Double commit though. This might be dangerous for T-Area as B-Roy rushes back to the goal. Oh! oh! Ty Knight's not able to get the goal there. It's knocked off the backboard and then sent back over to... Dakota Valley's side. Evor desperately trying to keep the ball out of the net as he has no boost ah, left. No! Will not be able to do it. That is tragic. Oh, you could see Bomber probably wanted to try and maneuver to counter to go up, but unfortunately they dodged forward so they weren't able to be able. They're kind of out of those movement options that you would need to counter that goal. It just slips right yeah, past both B Roy and Both B Roy and Bomber both there had no boost left to kind of defend against that. Really difficult situation. True. We do still have enough time for T area to come back in this match, and I am hopeful. Yes, very true. Alrighty, one minute and 30 seconds ish remaining on the clock. Dakota Valley Black sitting with a 2 0 lead. It isn't everything. Uh, if just 45 seconds per goal, roughly, if T area wants to sneak that into overtime and potentially get a game on Dakota Valley Black here. B-Roy looking to get the ball back into center field. Get more on the Dakota Valley side so they can get a goal here. But Leffert's taking it up into the air. Sitting around midfield right now. Ruggieri getting nice clear, nice clear on the Dakota Valley side. Looks like it just goes right back into Bri Bri's possession though. He's just so well able to control this ball. Um, pretty much at any moment. He just took control of it mid-air there. Roy getting uh, not the result he wanted there. Leffert it looks it like they're trying to, to go uh, for that offense. Yeah, it's kind of just being ping-ponged right now between the two sides. 
no one's really able to get any super definitive centers. So, good job on T's part, but unfortunately, it's sort of playing directly into what Dakota Valley wants. They want to stall that timer, you know, to ensure that their 2-0 lead is able to be able to uh, get them out in the semis. As I say that, and just a goal to make that 3-0, even more comfortably extending that lead to what's looking like a 3-0 here in both game score and amount of matches from Dakota Valley Black. Looks like a little bit of a self goal there. Might have been trying to block it. It came down a little bit too fast and ran into it there and uh, blended into their own goal. Can at least have Solace knowing it's not our first one of the, uh, the tournament, so... Yep, yep, that is true. Yes, uh, it did happen <laughs> earlier. One, uh, I believe, last year. <laughs> You're not so. the first one to own goal. Yep. That one wasn't as bad, though. You know, you gotta try yep. something. You know, if you try 100%. nothing, it's gonna go in. Can't yep. be afraid of the uh, failure in that situation there. Sir, and there's a 3-0 here. Oh, not quite. Dakota Valley says another one. A little as, bit of a buzzer beater. <laughs> uh, yeah, a little bit of a buzzer beater. Not that it particularly matters, but as going to setting the score line to 4-0 and o in the favor of Dakota Valley Black, and they will take themselves with a very nice lead over to the semifinals. This team is looking very, very strong. Mm -hmm. Very strong presence shown in these matches here. Yes, sir. As the number one seed as well, I suppose I would expect nothing less from them. Uh, doing a fantastic job of shutting down uh, T-Area High School Team 2. And with that, um, this concludes uh, the first quarterfinals match that we are going to be spectating. Uh, the next one that we will be looking at here will be between uh, Beresford, T... Oh, sorry, not, not that one. That's going to be match 12, which unfortunately has not quite been updated yet. So we will fill you in on those teams uh, when we get there. So uh, a little bit of a, a mystery, if you will. So stick around. And we will let you know how that goes.
Alrighty, hello everybody, and welcome back to our fourth best of three. I know we left it a mystery as to uh, the teams competing. However, uh, we have the return of the Bearsford team, Veracity, and Dakota Valley's Purple team. So, a familiar face versus another team from a school that you've seen absolutely dominate. Um, these teams are relatively close together in terms of seating. They're both four and five, um, and they both had the same uh, regular season. Um, what do you call it? Same score. So, yeah, hopefully it's going to be an exciting best of five here. Uh, uh, hopefully a bit more back and forth, if you will. And yet again, thank you, South Dakota State University, for putting on this show and um, helping us to uh, make this possible. So, let's get into the game. No goals yet. I, it's crazy. Okay, yeah, I'm just... Right. No, I'm, not, I'm just... just never Why? mind. Never Why mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> it's so Stop. over for me, bro. Rickman's Prime <laughs> with a beautiful from the top down into the I'm just going to mention it, you know, uh, for this uh, Dakota Valley Purple we haven't seen yet, but we have seen Beresford on the uh, stream here. And mm -hmm. it seems like it was a lot of that duo between Rickman's Prime and Pete Dizzle kind of setting each other up, going for those oh, goals yeah. totally. with the back line of Go Huskers kind of being there. Uh, defensive line. Um, see if Dakota Valley Purple is going to be able to overcome that because Barris uh, Ford did actually Sorry, have a substantial uh, lead in the games that they played. Accidentally had the uh, overlays backwards. Apologies. Barris Ford takes the first goal in this game. But yes, regardless of that fact. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry about that. Dakota Valley Purple taking it over to Barris Ford's side. Breakfast Prime looking to take it up and over. Cypher L says, no sir. Going over now. Sort Ooh. of just ping-ponging it in between each other for both sides. Trying to see who's going to come out on top of this and hopefully score a goal. And both teams trying to fight for that prio. Yes, trying sir. to catch the other slipping. Ball is left wide open right now. P. Dizzle looking to go for the goal. Cypher L is not able to save it. As he's second goal there for... Beresford High School. Beresford. Beresford High School. There we go. Yeah. Not 100%. I'm not sure if it's like Beersford, but I'm going to guess it's Beresford. I, uh, I, I, I uh, Googled pronunciation. It's Beresford. That's it. Okay. You know, I came good. prepared. That's it. Hit him with the. Hit him with the. <laughs> I like, as I have someone from Beresford come over and be like, no, actually, that's not how you say it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and talking, Beresford scores another goal. Yes, sir. Bears Ford, now, once oh, again. right on over, and once again, the combo, P. Dizzle and Rick yep. Prime, showing you how it's done. Beautiful job by them, kicking it up to three goals right now to zero. Roughly two minutes have elapsed in this game. Both teams probably just trying to feel each other out, see how their styles of play sort of mesh against each other, to see, uh, you know, who can come out on top here in this best of five. As we definitely know from our previous matches, I'm definitely more of an underdog uh, supporter here, so I'd love to see Dakota Valley Purple come back with a few more goals and make this a very nice and competitive match, uh, considering our past streams have been rough, rough one-sided battles. Yeah, 100%. I think that both of these teams should give us a relatively good show. I mean, both of them are seated like right on top of each other, so I'm just going to assume, you know... You know, uh, Dakota Valley Purple might have been caught a little bit off guard, you know, not 100% ready ready to go right off the gates. So, I mean, this game still has been relatively close, given terms of, like, possession and time on both sides of the field. I just think that Barris sure. Ford, you know, with the killer duo, right, has been able to land those goals and, you know, sink those shots in where uh, Dakota Valley Purple hasn't really had the chance to do so. Most definitely, most definitely. Uh, and as you're mentioning before, different play styles meshing. You know, it's going to take some time for each of these teams to kind of figure each other out. Uh, so it's definitely still anyone's yeah. game. Reminder that they are technically only playing against each other for five minutes at a time, right? That is a very short time to feel each other out. And as I say so, Rickman says, yo, let me feel this goal out. And gets the fourth there for Bears 14 Veracity. <laughs> Y'all mind if I score another one? Very nicely done. Yeah, that offensive duo, as we were, we were stating before, Pete Dizzle and Rick Prime just showing what they can do. 4-0 lead. 
But you know, also, you have to give credits to Mr. Big Red Go Huskers. My guess is that he is normally number three within their rotation. Not always the first person to go out and, you know, be the striker for the team to get those goals. So making sure the, you know, the home front's being secured as P. Dizzle picks up, I believe, his first goal of the game. Could be wrong there, but well played by them regardless, getting through the defense of Dakota Valley Purple. Yeah, and as you were mentioning, it is always important to mention that defense. I think Huskers is on that kind of defensive line, that third one up, uh, as you mentioned, but that doesn't make it any less important. Even more important, really. He's the one who's stopping them from kind of... Yes, uh, He's their, their last line of defense, you know, stopping them from scoring, so yeah, there's, definitely not There isn't too, really uh, a, uh, a true goalie in Rocket League, you know, as much to, like, its real-world counterpart in soccer or football, yes. if you will. Um, <laughs> football. <laughs> yeah. Breakfast Prime bouncing it off the top of the goal. Very well done by him. Catching it off. Pulling off a little bit of a dribble. And as you can see there. Really nice. Very just well barely done. scoots in. 100%, yeah. 6-0, less than a minute remaining. Bears for up 6-0. Pretty dominating performance. Not what, quite what I expected. However, we're going to have to see if it's... Uh, I'm going to say, Just see if it's a fluke it's for game one, but... Reckmas once again says, this is not a fluke. What you are seeing is reality. Don't need a top to figure out if you're in a dream. This is, this is real. Go no Huskers actually it. almost steals that goal. He almost touched it. He almost got that goal. That was, <laughs> that was pretty yep. close. Go Huskers kind of there. going a little bit more offensive, maybe trying to get you know get his name on the board for a goal. He's like, you know, he hears us talking, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I'm not <laughs> just defense. I'm not just defense. I can, yeah, I can do sure. the offense plays. <laughs> a little bit of a puzzle here over the ball possession. It's like Dakota Valley Purple does clear it. Almost gets a breakaway, not quite oh, on that's goal. perfectly centered! No one there to follow it up. Oh! No! no Bengals so is close. not able to get it. That's a travesty. It most likely Reckless wouldn't have mattered for the total though. match scores. There are only 10 seconds left, but it would have been a nice kind of uh, mental state going into the next match. Mm -hmm. To kind of Makes end sense. on a goal for your team. And with that, the game number one comes to a close with Bears for Veracity taking themselves up a game very nice. Quite a convincing win from them, giving them a complete lockout, saying, uh, sorry bro, um, you're not gonna get to score today. So, um, yeah. Goodness. But as stated, they are close in the standing, so you never know. Maybe the next one could switch it around the other side. And oh, no. Beresford could be on the back foot here. We'll have to wait and see. It's like the players kind of discussing what they want to do for the uh, next match here. Yep. Let me in, coach. All right, <laughs> game two now underway. Maybe not, maybe not. I'm not going to Yeah, no, game. no, I have not <laughs> played. Don't, don't let me Rocket in. League, you were all much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Bedizzle hitting you up with the un five seconds goal. Very well played by them. Seeing that there's a nice opportunity with nobody in the goal, just swipes it over to the side and says, thank you very much for the 1-0 lead. Crazy. It seems like a lot of these games are just getting goals really fast know, off of the start. It's almost it's, as if the players aren't ready. It's, uh... Yeah, it's like it's like when you uh, rock, paper, scissors, you don't go on shoe, you yeah, just one, two, go three, on go. scissors. It's like, oh, I wasn't ready for that one. Sorry, bro. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, it's just crazy how, how many of these games are showing... Uh... Like how um, possible that is. First five seconds, just taking that lead. Yep. Uh, Bears Ford once again. And Bears Ford with go. another goal from Huskers, showing that he is an offensive player as well. Mayhaps <laughs> comes he in is here. Him. Mayhaps. Man, I'm not gonna lie though. It does not look good for Dakota Valley Purple's defense. Letting two goals in immediately within 30 seconds of the clock ticking down is not a, necessarily a good feeling. With a third... Oh, oh my oh. god! Oh. No. Yo, oh, that would have been a beautiful save by Bengals. So much players. effort. Look so much that. effort from the defense here. A beautiful bicycle there. But unfortunately, <laughs> Rick says... Rick says, hello. Just shuts it down. Yes, sir. That is truly unfortunate. Kick off There's here, just so much out. struggle and so much effort to get it out of the goal there, too. Rick so is taking it up yet again, looking to get a score here, maybe. 
That looks to be an open goal. Oh no. Dizzle, <laughs> able to get the setup there. Making it One of the players seem to be favor. stuck on the actual goalpost here on the left. Yeah, he's, he's flipping out literally. <laughs> His car's oh, flat out. That's a. Uh, yeah. Car troubles. Yeah. Ultra play. Can you imagine if your <laughs> Rocket League car just randomly broke down in the middle of the match. <laughs> yeah. that, that would suck. Call so the mechanic much. mid match. <laughs> yeah, for real, man. All right. Okay, getting a tap here. Dakota Valley Purple looking to clear it. However, Reckmas Prime looks to get it centered, ready for uh, possibly the number two to get it in. Ooh. However, Bengals looks for the clear. Very nice from them to get that started. Bengals trying to drive it down their field. However, that might... Nope, that is saved once again by Almost Bengals. Almost the snipe from across the field by Reckmas. Mm -hmm. Dakota Valley Purple trying to go on the offense here. Yep. Not quite able to make it that far. Before they're, they're eventually they're pushed they back hands. by Ford. Showing they got hands, but they need to land a hit. Score a, a goal bit of an here. An aerial so. attempt here. Oh. oh, it was looking good, but Huskers with that impenetrable defense, it seems, without a goal yep. scored. Yep. Tense Beaver clearing that. Nicholas Prime taking it up the back here. However, Cipher being able to clear it, get it over onto Ford's side, possibly. Oh, so close. Teammates just aren't quite there, you know, for being able to follow that up, you know, versus the side of Bearsport, where there's always somebody right behind um, Rickmas to, you know, get those goals. But yeah, it definitely like does seem to goal. be the stark difference. Is uh, you know, we get those centers sometimes, uh, or Dakota Valley, sorry, gets those centers sometimes on uh, their offensive push, and they have like one chance to get it, and there's just no one there ready to follow up. Whether that be yep. because of boost or the player not ready for it, miscommunication. But on the other side, Beresford just every single time has that center, has one player, if not two players, constantly hammering the ball in the net, and they do it again. Those rotations, 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 man. One player right after the other, they have this down pat, and they're showing why. Basically reaching their previous game score within three minutes, which is very impressive from them. And the sheer display of dominance right now by Bears for Team Ferocity. I mean, goodness gracious, I don't know exactly. Two minutes? I mean, you're going to need to score a game less than every 30 seconds, even 20 seconds, to be able to pull this back here for Dakota Valley Purple. Yeah, it's definitely not looking good for Dakota Valley Purple. It is still possible, you know, as we've mentioned before, goals can happen very quickly in Rocket League. But, you know, for a team that hasn't been able to get past the line of defense on Beresford just yet, as they as they almost do, actually, as, as yeah, I was speaking, was I almost cursed it again. Yeah. <laughs> Tense Beaver was not able to quite get the center. He missed the bounce off on the wall. But, you know, who doesn't miss the centers? Not be dizzled. You're, you're jinxing. You got it knocked away from him. Yeah, that's the, uh... However, Husker is going for the dive there. Not quite able to make it in. Being cleared away. Currently sitting in the pocket of Dakota Valley Purple. Save Ooh. looks like just barely into struggle. the goal. Save Dakota Valley's got to clear Beaver. this ball. Yep. Cleared by oh, Bengals. Solid clear. Looks like we do kind of get a reset. Dakota Valley on oh, the offense temporarily. Might be caught with but just like the that. Boost. Oh Husker's no, just he greets their offense and flips it. Oh, uh, if you can see in the side there, you can see that. Oh, goodness. Tense Beaver went for boost, and he was caught on the wrong side of the goal. Super unfortunate there. That just shows how fast the momentum can switch up. It was it was looking like Dakota Valley Purple had a really good momentum on that offense. And just with one tap, Huskers completely flipped it on its side, uh, putting them on the offense and catching their defense off guard. Rickmas there. Goodness yeah, gracious, this guy is a scoring machine. He is the Reaper, and he and he is the one who knocks. That goal is now mine. <laughs> Your goalposts will not survive his fury. <laughs> this he duo is. does seem to be just unstoppable so far. Yeah, man, Especially, it, it seems to be uh, the offensive duo with the back line and strong defense and follow up with Oscars. Seems to be a very wow, solid team goodness, for Bears Ford. Man. I need to see the arc on that one. That was insane. 
Rickmas kicking it from their side of the field so far away. Basically an open goal there. Dakota Valley Purple really, really, really needs to be able to at least have somebody closer to the back of their field to be able to cover for those far pot shots. Or at least being able to have... Well, there we go! Well, Never mind. we get one! Dakota Valley Purple, 1-9. Yes, They're saying we will not Rickmas go silently the night. Oh! <laughs> Threads the needle, absolutely. Every yeah, player job. on Beresford was just so close to hitting that and just barely missed. Perfect shot by Dakota Valley Purple. Yeah, they're gonna need to score a couple more though to show that they have what it takes, you know, to make sure they bring it back possibly for a reverse sweep in game yeah, quite, number quite three. Quite a couple more. <laughs> yeah, we I do agree. need quite Having more. Eight goal lead is quite a hard uh, comeback to mount. Um, I cannot say confidently that they will have the aptitude to bring it back uh, with 30 seconds remaining here. But you know what? Another game, another day. They'll be able to fight that, hopefully, with a fresh mental. Looks like going for a goal here. P. Dizzle not able to be saved by the side of Dakota Valley. And nets it in here for their 10th goal of game number two. I believe, is this the highest we've seen? Or I think 10 is the highest, so if they get one more, we yes, 11 would be the highest. That we've seen today on stream, at least. PR. No. Thirty seconds. Yeah, the, now the remaining Fenworks the world record. <laughs> Fenworks world record. Um, you know, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, we only reside roughly within four states right now, so maybe a region record, I guess you could say, a Midwest record, perhaps. Um, but yeah. Yeah, we can we can take that. A, we can take. That. <laughs> yeah, I would say honestly, yeah, take a pat on the back and a gold medal for your efforts, a gold star. Alrighty, it looks like three, two, and one on the countdown. Rickmas Prime Rickmas trying, trying to go, to go for, for a goal. one more goal. Almost gets it in, actually. Yes, sir. Not able to solidify it. As we go back over the player cams, as Bears 4 Team Verocity takes game two in even more dominant fashion than they did game one. Yeah, really just showing that pure dominance, as we were mentioning, with, you know, their players seem to have a really good communication between all three of them on Beresford. And Dakota Valley Purple was actually able to find a slight gap at one point, whether that be due to their uh, performance or finding that gap, or Beresford having a slip-up. Regardless, they got to try to recreate uh, that with that one goal that they were able to get, and hopefully get it off the start of this game here. Yes, sir. I mean, you know, our 15-second goals seem to be the specialty of the day. The moment that happens, and P. Dizzle looking to make that happen. However, oh, oh, just barely. Oh, well, you know the curse. It just keeps happening. Wasn't 15 seconds though. Wasn't it wasn't. 15 I seconds, guess so. 17 seconds through. <laughs> yeah, there we go. As uh, first goal being scored there by P. Dizzle. Very nicely done. Just bad. We're, we're, uh, Black Dakota. Sorry, sorry, not Dakota Valley Black. That was the other team. Dakota Valley Purple seems to just be barely missing those defensive saves. Um, is, yeah. I believe he didn't have enough boost to kind of get all the way up there, but it's just so close. Nice save by Beaver there. here. Cyprell mm -hmm. looking to get it out. However, it is thrown further into uh, Ferris Ford's pocket. Looks like. Sense Beaver looking to get it centered! Oh, but swacked away there. Uh, Beresford just so fast on that response. So fast yes, to sir. respond to whatever they're doing. Oscar's getting the center. Just instantly shutting it down. Alrighty, Rickamus Prime. Eyeing the goal like a hawk, trying to figure Ooh. out what route do I need to take. Ooh! Oh, oh, Bengals was so close there, but unfortunately he was challenged by Rickamus Prime, and he is able to score the goal so off of that initial block. That is what a full boost meter can do for you. What a crazy play there from Rickamus. And unfortunately, uh, the one player within the net, looks like Cypher, wasn't quite able to uh, mount a def defense there. And uh, Beresford goes up 2-0 right now. On that attempt right before Bengals almost got a goal there, he kind of like juked both their players on Beresford and just wasn't able to get past that last line of defense. And then, as in fashion, we saw them just completely take their offense, flip it on its head, and nope. get a goal. This is my offense now. Didn't know you yes, do that. Yes, I will take this. This is yeah. mine. <laughs> Huskers going up. Not able to get anything off of it. 
Both challenged in the air. Cypher pops it up. P-Diddle. P-Diddle with the answer. Alright, just being ping-ponged by both sides. Looks like no one has definitive control yet of the ball. These are the situations where Beresford usually comes out on top with those ping pongs. They're able to get those really fast rotations constantly coming back and adding more pressure. Seems like they are very good at this. Oh, Tense Beaver looking to make something happen. Ah, uh, just barely not able to get it into the pockets. Of Still Bears trying to get a center, goal. but they just can't. Nope. Such Oscar's a dominant defense is just. <laughs> Just an impenetrable wall, it seems, on uh, Beresfield's defense there. Mm -hmm. Every uh -oh, attempt that uh, Dakota Bears Valley Field's Purple makes <laughs> to try to get a center. Just gets instantly yep. shut down. Oh, Bengals oh. getting demoed there, unfortunate. Setting up a 2v3 situation for a couple seconds, which is all Rickamus Prime needs to score his second goal of the game. Lovely aerial there, popping it over both. The defenders on the side of Dakota Valley Purple making it look Yeah, they're easy. usually doing it together. They're usually doing those duo passes, yeah. those centers between P. Dizzle and Rickmas Prime. Rickmas Prime just says, no, I, I can do it myself, too. Nah, win. <laughs> yeah. He centers himself. Yep. Alrighty, let's Cypher see with a nice block, a has... little bit of a clear here. Yep, center field roughly. It's being popped up Angle's right now by Rickmas Prime. trying to go on a breakaway, but just can't quite get it. Tense Beaver looking to take it up, but not off. More important to grab that boost meter for him. As uh, P. Dizzle looking to get something towards the goal, but unfortunately misses. However, Rekimus, you know he doesn't miss those. Getting it centered for his teammates. Huskers getting it nice and centered. Ooh. However, though, it is saved by Cypher. Kicking it right out. Yeah, very situation for Dakota side. Valley. Yes, sir. Rekimus Prime taking it up and off here as he centers it. Can we see anything from P-Dizzle? Oh, nice bicycle there from Bengals, keeping it off to the side, preventing a center. Now currently up and wild in the air. That's a phrase. <laughs> <laughs> that it is? <laughs> it, it is It is up in the air. I wouldn't say wild. It, it was kind of a floating down. <laughs> Bears forward looking like they're going to have to retreat here and get some boost. Huskers getting yeah. boost here. They're on the back foot. Dakota Valley Purple. Tense Beaver! Ooh. Oh, oh. looking to center it! Cypher RL so just did close. not have the boost. No boost to make that happen. Really unfortunate. Man, there's I so many, it. like, sparks of just, like, Dakota Valley being able to get these, like, you know, immediate centers. But once again, there's just not the yeah. people or the boost to follow it up with. It's really unfortunate to see. Exactly what I was going to mention. All those little sparks that, you know, we keep seeing, the, that little shimmer of light where, uh, Dakota Valley like has a really good play, and it's just it seems like you know in that situation it's kind of that boost control uh, from Barris uh, Barris Ford. Sorry, I almost said Barris Field again, and they get another goal. Husker saying I'm there too. Ooh. Don't forget me. <laughs> yeah, true. Give him another Husker goal. comes in and gets another goal. Yes, sir. The 4-0 lead for Barris Ford. 20 seconds left. Not looking good for Dakota Valley Purple. Yeah, definitely the way that I think Beresford wanted this match to go probably was definitely wanted it to be a lot closer. I mean, it was ultimately in terms of scoreline. However, they just weren't able to get the goals that they needed to make it count for a game four. Maybe as I say this, there will be a goal, score, uh, goal scored. Nope. One second left on the timer. And it looks and like... The ball drops. Ferris Ford, Team Barossi will take the Series 3-0 as we swell over player cams real quick. Absolutely dominating performance by them regardless. GG's to both teams. And that now concludes our Rocket League segment for today. We will be back shortly with some League of Legends. So if you know the game or know the teams playing, uh, please, yep. We'll have uh, our first match. BO3 is between Dakota Valley Purple and Northwestern Area League of Legends. Um, yeah, should be a fun match. Thank you for coming out, and thank you, Ethan, for being my co-caster today. I really appreciate it. Did a great yeah, job. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. Fun games. Yes, fun sir. games to watch. Yeah, for real. And uh, with that, we will uh, send it over to intermission and catch you guys in a bit.
Discord. Start. Alrighty. Appears. Oh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the League of Legends portion of our live stream. Unfortunately, the on-screen overlay does not appear to be quite working as it should. So instead, we're going to swap to the backup. Uh, so we have uh, two teams here today. The left side is going to be. Um, let's see. Dakota Valley Purple, and then the right side is going to be Northwestern Area League of Legends. So, uh, allow me to get the overlay real quick. And I am currently joined by my wonderful co-caster, uh, Kale. Coach Kale, if you will. And he will give you sort of a breakdown on what all of these teams are looking to do in the uh, sort of pick and ban process here and sort of explain to you in a little bit greater detail on um, what uh, League of Legends is as a game, if you're not familiar with it. Right on. Thank you so much, Brendan. Yeah, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. My name's Kale. Um, let's talk League of Legends a little bit. Um, we've got three, well, six bands, three on either side already selected. Um, I'm seeing, you know, they're, they're picking some very relevant champions. They're banning Trundle and Briar, um, both, uh, I guess, interesting, certainly. Trundle, a split-pushing monster, and, and Briar, a um, global uh, menace on, on the map. Um, Nocturne the same. It looks like um, Dakota Valley is really trying to get rid of those global ultimates, um, while the, excuse me, Northwestern is just getting rid of some very relevant meta picks. Um, so we've seen both now supports pick their role. The junglers, uh, comp well, Warwick and Viego picked uh, by Northwestern. That's interesting. Warwick, Brendan, top. Any Warwick top with barrier can be a surprisingly good pick. <laughs> Yes, I, I think I've personally uh, experienced and suffered at the hands of that. The displeasure of playing against that, yeah, it's pretty cheesy. <laughs> yeah. Not, not so fun. So um, we know Dakota Valley is actually it consists of a lot of diamond players. So I imagine they're going to be sticking that is the to black team. some. Oh, okay, Dakota Valley the team is not quite. Uh, well, black team, but. What what I'm observing already is is Zaya, Rakan, Zoe. You have the makings of um, a, a pretty significant team fight comp. Um, Zoe, a constant ranged threat. Are we gonna get Teemo? Um, no way. Are we gonna get Teemo in this early? Let's see it, For please. Free? No way. <laughs> That's gonna be insane if we get it. They're hovering it. Ah, no, it's oh. the Athleona. It's all good. Maybe they're baiting. They're baiting a counter on yep. Teemo for that, yep. that last pick. Pick Vayne Top, we dare you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Amumu, yeah, look at this team fight comp going on here from Dakota Valley. This is um, going to be Zaya scaling, farming as much as she can. Um, Rakan, Zaya, a very strong, dynamic duo in the bot lane. Um, and a Mumu, oh my, and Shen, oh my, yeah. So they've got they've got the team fight comp. They're gonna have likely two teleports. Um, they're gonna be able to really really play in that late game phase. While on the right, we're seeing similarly. What are you thinking here, Brendan? I, I guess Leona, great engage. Viego, great engage. Um, Warwick, you know, flying at mock speed when across it's... the map. <laughs> um, Ash, you know, definitely that stun is going to be big for picks, and Huey a constant range threat as well. I, I personally, I'm feeling less of a team fight threat from the Northwestern comp. However, um, a lot of those champions thrive once they get ahead. Um, so if Viego gets any sort of gold lead, if um, Warwick is significantly powerful in the top lane, I'm going to go with that where he's going to be um yep. we'll see here shortly but yeah no and way if you get get a couple items on him he's going to be pumping out serious damage for um mid game and onward so yep i see uh some pretty good pick here from the side of northwestern area right you have the ash arrow you have the solar eclipse from leona you have warwick ult you can kind of just like sort of find one person and go okay uh you're gonna die now <laughs> pretty much right hey uh brendan i'm getting a I'm getting a little um, update here. Supposedly, the teams we have. Yep, I got it. Are no worries. Yep. Okay. It's good. Should be at least. 
Yeah, so you, we, we have it right. I, I think Molly's... Northwestern area, yep, is the second team on the red side. Um, yep, so uh, we're going to have a little bit of a uh, spectator delay here. Um, every yeah. League of Legends game is going to have three minutes. Obviously, uh, you know, Ward's last three minutes. Uh, so we want to make sure that there's, uh, you know, no ghosting so that people can get uh, any more information than they legally should be able to. Yeah, so right now all all 10 players are on the map. They're they're getting ready to start that first buff here in the next 30 seconds and then we're going to be uh for going they're going to be right into the laning phase. We'll be watching from 3 minutes behind and and commenting from there. But um yeah, I guess what I'm what I'm seeing here is Amumu and and Diego. I think Amumu's going to have a little quicker clear. Um he might be able to yeah, I imagine he's going to be starting bot side and working his way top. Viego likely the same. Maybe see some action um, in the in the first you know three and a half to five minutes uh, amongst the junglers. Um, but I really think Dakota Valley is going to be focusing on that that scaling to get everyone online, everyone um, brought up to um, the power level they need to be at to really win in team fights and objective fights. Um, Amumu, um, Zaya, Rakan in a Baron pit is a serious threat. So I, I'm excited to see that. Um, I guess, Brendan, what, what are your thoughts? So I guess overall, um, between the two teams, I don't really see one that I particularly like, hmm, this is like going to absolutely win them the game. I think it's ultimately going to come down to, uh, you know, just like who has the better teamwork on the day. Uh, specifically... Um, just, like, who's able to, like, coordinate their uh, ults better to, you know, like, get picks and uh, start team fights. So those are the, the those are, like, pretty much, like, the two big things. Also, uh, sometimes, uh, like, rank and how much somebody's been, like, playing ranked over the past little bit while, you know, how practiced they are on their champs is going to be super big. As you saw, there was, like, a bunch of just sort of, like, uh, bands that aren't necessarily, like, you know, what one would call, like, uh, like professional, right? Like, you pick at, like, the highest echelon of play, so it's just, like, what each player prioritizes, and if they have exactly what they want. So, yep. We're gonna be, uh, heading here into game, finally, and it looks like we have, uh... Need some ride. expressions there. Some yep. expressions look like there's gonna be a fight, so I'm excited already to see what happens here in the first three minutes, but, um, yeah, we're, we're on the rift, um... Mirroring what you're saying there, I I, I think um, playing what was it? I think Warwick banned Trundle, so that that makes sense to me. Not many people are going to be able to sustain in lane like Warwick does. Trundle, on the other hand, might be able to um, contest, be um, a threat in lane to to that. I I wonder what Shen will have prepared. I feel like Shen is a fairly decent counter into that matchup. But yes, K, we're seeing Diego starting bot side, Amumu starting bot side, which means they're going to be pathing to the other side of the map. You can refer to the mini map there at the bottom right of the screen. That's going to show you where um, everyone is located on the map at all times. Um, so we're, we're going to see uh, the tempo of the game, at, the, at least in this early game, work up towards grubs. Uh, void grubs will spawn at five minutes, and I anticipate Amumu and uh, Viego running into each other in the river, probably contesting <laughs> Scuttle or maybe ganking uh, Warwick and uh, Viego. They don't have the greatest escapes. I think Viego's a little bit better off there in, in trying to survive a gank. Um, but yeah, that's that's my speculation. Yeah, I mean, definitely the biggest thing is probably like, you know, these early scuttles and trying to get a lead. Wait, that's an Ash mid. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, my brain just didn't even process this. It looks like it is a Huey Leona bot lane. Interesting. Okay, well, that's a way to certainly shake things up in case people aren't <laughs> able to quite know where uh, they were going. So, uh, yeah, that is a very interesting pick. We just didn't know purpose? how that lane particularly plays out. Um, I mean, at the very least, the players could just swap if that was the case, you know, like, uh, send, uh, the Huey up mid and, uh, the, yeah. Uh, yeah, send the Ash down bot, but, you know, it looks like it um, appears to be intentional. Rakan into Huey, or Huey into Rakan seems risky, however, if Huey is, has his distancing down, has his, um, range figured out, I, I think that could be a serious threat to, um, Zaya, certainly, um, Okay, we've seen some, some, some 
skirmishing yep. here going on in the top lane. Warwick already used his potion. Um, Shen, on the other hand, still has a potion, is relatively healthy, so we'll be see, watching that closely. Uh, Looks like there's going to be a fight down here in the bot lane. Zaya popping Ghost, Leona popping the Flash, Zaya flashes to follow. Looks like she might get the kill with the, the Q. First blood going over there for Dakota Valley Purple. Very well done on their part. Wow, yeah. Um, that's the the one one thing you got to look out for on Leona. If you throw yeah. the E, you're kind of committed. If you Blade, land it, so. you are coming with me. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And you know, I was going to point out specifically about the Rakan matchup into Leona. Rakan hates being locked down, right? And he's playing against yeah. a Leona. And it looks like a simple and easy kill there for the Zoe. Put her to sleep, and you hit him with the Q, and using the uh, the W pick up there on the heel for a little bit of extra wave clear. Zoe's he's probably going to take a. What's up? No, I was just going to say she's got an opportunity there to freeze the wave as well, denying Ash further XP and gold. So that will be, well, she's, see what she's trying to do here. Maybe just thinning the wave a little bit. Yeah. Shen's quite good at wave management as well, just inherently with his kit. Um, I, I imagine he might have um, an opportunity there to deny Warwick some resources as well. Zoe really risking it all here. Yep. <laughs> and by that, uh, maybe baiting a little bit. Ah, there's that gank top lane I, I was thinking. Uh, Warwick is not going to have oh. an ability to leave here, so we'll see how he plays this. Yeah, that's probably just going to be a kill. I mean, Warwick... I mean, what can you do? <laughs> Mumu's <laughs> right on top of you. You got a Shen right on top of you. Both of them have CC for days. There's just not much. I mean, you probably just accept the death. Probably good to save the flash, you know, if you're just dead for that one, because, you know, if you do flash yourself, uh, Mumu can easily flash bandage cost to follow. So, good on uh, Warwick at least saving that so he can, you know, maybe have a uh, press and advantage later down in the, the lane phase. Yeah, yeah. Um, having sums up for the uh, ensuing objectives that will be spawning here shortly in the next 20 seconds, Void Grubs are going to spawn as well as the first dragon. So we'll see what the junglers prioritize, how our lanes here um, take priority or advantage to um, set up for these. I think that's going to be really critical to the Dakota Valley strategy. I mean, they're already um, up three kills, which is going to be a significant gold lead. Um, however, being able to lock down those objectives, or uh, conversely, Northwestern um, taking advantage of those objectives to make a comeback, I think is going to be really big to um, both of these teams now at this point. Mm -hmm. And the Leona now, as you can see on the bottom side of our map, is getting pushed out slowly but surely by that Rakan. And, uh, oh, whoops. One second. Looks like uh, Fog of War needs to be adjusted. There we go. Alrighty. Should make it a little bit easier for uh, folks to see both sides of the map. As uh, Viego and Warwick are now both taking uh, Void Grubs over to the sides. Uh, getting those Void Grubs, as Kale mentioned earlier, are very important uh, towards, you know, getting a jungler ahead. And also, uh, for split pushing. And, you know, with a Warwick. And, um, yeah, Warwick's gonna have a very fun time on those sidelines, potentially, after he uh, fells a turret. Yeah, I, I think Warwick's going to be the one taking advantage of Void Grubs, certainly, um, on the um, other side. I actually really like that Dakota Valley is prioritizing Dragons here. Yep. Oh. Dakota Valley yeah, yeah. certainly uh, making that happen, yes sir. Yeah, taking advantage of um, the the strategies that are going to, to put them in the lead um, and, and keep them there. Okay, Warwick oh. here, looking Warwick to trade. Ult. Not much happening. Leave up Dumbo procced. You guys are just going to use it to use some chip damage. Uh, not exactly a kill angle, especially because, uh, you know, Shen with that W is able to block pretty much auto attacks, and Warwick ult does count oh. towards those. Shen using the taunts onto him. Looks like... Nothing more will happen with that trade. Just Warwick getting chunked out. Probably going to recall here and use that TP to get back topside. Oh, and there's something that I was actually going to think about uh, mentioning earlier in the bot side lane. Rakan tries to dash in. Wei has a super easy angle to just basically fear the Rakan out of his grand entrance, his W. Uh, with his EQ, I believe, that it's basically just a straight line fear. So, making it super easy to disengage from that lane, keeping the Wei safe during any given time, and Zoe getting a catch here onto the Viego does not decide to pursue, wow. you are not worth my time, she says, <laughs> and goes no. promptly uh, back into river. 
Now, I wonder, I, I imagine Leona R, if timed perfectly, could probably cancel a Rakan knockup, or certainly halt him um, after a Rakan ults. Okay, we're seeing an Ash Arrow fly top. All right, it missed just barely, um, but but a uh, Leona is able to stop the momentum that a Rakan um, can can use to um, haunt an entire team, uh, possibly. So I I really um, hope that Leona and Huey do do just that. What you were saying, Brendan, and um, you know try to lock down Rakan to um, lessen their their chance of just absolutely rolling a team fight. Yes, that sir, is yes, the strategy that Dakota Valley will be employing this whole game. I think Shen's going to start looking to ultimate across the map. That's Shen up here. This this blue uh, guy with the swords is going to be able ninja. to ultimate. Blue ninja man uh, is going to be able to ultimate across the map to any of his allies, helping them in any sort of uh, skirmish in the jungle or team fight on the other side of the match, which gives or, or ma map, excuse me, which gives them a lot of flexibility. Um, to secure objectives on all sides. Um, you know, we talk about League of Legends being like a very complex game of tug of war, and, and Shen is playing um, many sides. He's leveraging a lot of different uh, objectives and, and resources simultaneously, and if he gets ahead, I think we're going to be seeing that here um, handedly. Yeah, it looks like he... Oh, flashes away. I was going to say, Shen might win out on that fight. Uh, with being able to, you know, get those grass procs and with his extra Q damage. And Dilly also having relatively low mana. I mean, Shen could probably look for a kill angle, but uh, probably have to wait and see uh, what his next moves are here. Looks like we're about to have a 3k gold advantage in the first 10 minutes of the game. That is significant. I am en envisioning Northwestern taking advantage of, of one of these objectives coming up here to try to um, secure some kind of lead. Maybe looking to get some deeper wards into the enemy team's jungle um, or into Dakota Valley's jungle to look for picks. Um, they're going to need to close that gold uh, gap here to... Hope, hope of a win here. Uh, hope to secure a win. So, um, I'm curious what they Looks will like employ. Looks like that bot lane will do just that as the Rakan and Zaya look to get a kill on the Leona. Flash out from the Leona. Looks to be just fine, though, for Northwestern area. Never mind, says uh, Rakan and Zaya as they just like to go back to pushing the lane. Take off. Um, okay, we are seeing here a Mumu and Shen setting up for the Void Grubs. Uh, neither top laner pushed, they're and they're just going right into the fight. Yep, Amumu getting them super low here. Looks like the Viego will fall. Oh, and a curse of the oh. sad mummy there to save Shen. A double kill going out to Jester. Very well played there. And they will take go uh, the, the last of the grubs there as uh, basically a prize for the kills that they have just gotten. Wow, yeah. Um, so... Uh, that's going to allow them to push even even more um, or now three grubs on either side So they're both evenly getting true damage um, or damage that is unblockable by the towers really adds up over the course of the game So both both teams will have a little bit of an advantage pushing now um, But what I was saying just before they started fighting before you run to an objective you can see the two pits on the map um, they're uh, mirrored across the uh, Sides of the the map you can see the dragon uh, pit just to the left of the screen there. Um, there's looks like there's fight brewing right here. Rakan possibly yeah. getting picked? No, no way. Just out of there. No, um, say but... no way. <laughs> right. <laughs> you got uh, cursed. Well, um, or yes way, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, wow. Um, no. So, so you want to, um, before objective fights, typically take priority of your, your lane, push the wave, denying your opponents in the lane the opportunity to seize the gold from those minions while fighting over the objective. So um, no one had done that yet, but um, I, I imagine, you know... Never mind. <laughs> He's not looking to go in anymore. He just takes uh, three empowered autos from Shen and says, Nope. I don't want that. <laughs> and Never with mind. D, D shield and ninja tabbies is... Yep. Oh, can Rakan escape? Ooh, missing sure? the solar oh. eclipse. Grand entrance going back in onto the Viego, Viego here. Zayo coming out. However, the Rakan will go down. Is Viego able to get anything more here? Nope. He is just going to W away. But Amumu says, let me in on it. Lands a nice banish toss. Curse of the Sad Mummy on a three. No pullback there for the Zaya, but they will be able to get the Leona as a consolation prize there. 
Very well done from the side of Dakota Valley Purple. As the Shen now taunts into the Warwick. I guess the Warwick just wow. didn't quite uh, just underestimated the Shen damage. It it can be pretty big once he does get Tiamat and has that Q maxed. It uh, is very deceptive. Uh, Shen, Shen damage is, is only going to get bigger here. He's going to look to buy things like Bramble Vest, um, an item that will yeah. not allow Warwick to have his natural healing ability, which was his uh, advantage in lane. Um, yep. So yeah, Can't we'll, we'll see what lane. he decides to do. Simple oh. as that. <laughs> That's just... Ash is uh, quite overextended, unfortunately. Um, does help to know that Dragon was up. See wards here. Um, it looks like blue side has a couple wards on the map, and red side currently does not have any wards down, which is going to put them in a in a tough spot against a Mumu and um, and and Zoe. Even You're, if you can't see a bubble coming through these these walls, um, it's going to be difficult to not get picked. So we'll see how they they bounce back from from this uh, visionless position. Yep, not gonna lie, I do not want to be the person to face check an Amumu or Shen or Rakan, <laughs> yeah. regardless of who I'm playing. I could be a fed Nautilus, but, you know, not having any vision in the enemy jungle or even in your own river is, um, pretty bad, or like, pretty unfortunate, I guess. You know, getting those, uh, getting those wards down really helps you to track enemy movement, not only so you know where they are right now, but also where they have the possibility of going to sort of be able to extrapolate what their next positions are. So, for example, if a Mumu, well, you know, is walking over to Raptors, he wants to gank mid, you can see him, and uh, you're able to sort of determine, hey, I need to play safe right now. However, the Shen looking to uh, get a taunt over on the Warwick. Warwick ults in response. Looks like it's just going to be a big old slap fight, but we have something way more important happening in the bottom lane. Alter are being exchanged on every side of the map. Oh my goodness, everybody's fighting! However, it looks like Zoe's gonna get a kill here. Shen looking to say, I want to do the same. But it looks like Viego wants to come in for the gank and hit the W. Not hit the W Great as Shen flashes Shen. out of it. Yes, sir. Did what he needed to do. He is going to stay safe for now. Warwick possibly wanting to look for a dive, but Amumu is here to counter. And probably oh. just gonna nice wrap up that kill there. Getting both charges of the bandit toss, bandage toss off. And Shen is able to assist for the second giving the Amumu a double kill. This Amumu no. is pretty massive. He could start building some uh, AP damage items, as you can see with that Haunting Guys. You think he's going Leandris with that, or...? Oh, 100%. Yeah, definitely not Leandris. Okay, so um, there are two red wards in the top river. I'm not certain if they were actually able to see the Amumu walk up um, through his own jungle. So if they missed that, yeah, now Amumu's up more gold. Um, we're going to see him get some damage on the and board. Her, okay. okay. TP top, Warwick's back top, Ash flashing in for Zoe. Oh, is she gonna die? No. Yep, Ash very greedy. She wanted that kill super bad, but she does not have the damage right now. Currently, what's uh, looking like building into a Blade of the Ruin King. Uh, Mumu is just gonna finish off the Rift Herald there. Hopefully, he wants to probably use that top side to give Shen the uh, basically the breathing room that he needs from this Warwick and to be able to really open up the map so he can just sort of sit in side lane and then ult wherever he wants to. And it looks like that's probably just going to happen as Amumu is currently eventually going to take down this Warwick who is healing a bunch. Looks oh like he did not has... quite have the Bramble Vest pickup yet. But bottom lane, looking to get something cross map. As Rakan looks to uh, the quickening some of the enemies here. Oh, this Huge not... pullback for Zaya as she gets two kills. And that's going to be turned into a triple kill as they wipe the entire bottom side of the map. And I don't know if you caught it or not, but Zoe actually scores a kill mid as well onto the Ash. And Cherry on top. Shen gets a turret for his lane. And by the way, Amuma got to save Rift Herald. So if he wants to, he can come down bot side or go to the mid lane and drive it wherever he wants. Yeah, we have a 10k gold advantage or, or difference here at 16 and a half minutes into the game. This is going to be an incredibly uh, difficult game for, for Northwestern to come back from. However, there, there will be opportunities. Every objective fight, every, um, I guess, every lone jungler wandering through the jungle is a potential pick into a 4v5 objective fight. Um, yeah, it was an interesting decision to to gank Rakan and Zaya uh, bot a... a don't even think they they used all their sums. It looks like Rakan still got his ignite, but um, I guess Amumu wasn't there. You only want to gank the strong side of the map when you're on the losing side if um, you know you're going to be able to survive it. So that's very unfortunate for Northwestern that um, 
all three perished. We look like we got more skirmishes happening, more fighting. Yeah, Solar Eclipse gonna land on a two. Nothing quite out of it though, as both the Huey and the Leona are rather far behind comparatively to the Zaya and Rakan. Zaya absolutely fed. She's already sitting on a Kraken Slayer and is looking to build into her next item, which might be an Infinity Edge. I'm not 100% sure of that it, build yeah, path. Taking, it, taking advantage of the updated crit items. Um, mm -hmm. True, yeah, big whole... buffs. This 14.6 uh, patch. And uh, as Shen oh looks for possibly a, another kill here on the Warwick, grabbing his third of the game. Diego, as you said, turning that into a 4v5. He's, uh, he's caught and killed. There we go. Looks like Dakota Valley Purple is going to attempt to take this Chemtech uh, Dragon here. And honestly, that's going to be an okay soul. Uh, Chemtech soul isn't always the best, but um, against uh, the enemy team, you know, you have a Leon, a Warwick. You have a lot of CC on the enemy team, so that tenacity is going to be nice. And also the healing and shielding power up both on the uh, the Shen and the, uh, the Rakan are going to be nice. Oh, bot side, even more. Well, looks like bot lane here is just going to fall to the side of uh, Dakota Valley Purple. We're seeing Dakota Valley really prioritize their strong side here. Bot lane got a lead early in the game, and now, as we've just seen, four teammates roaming bot lane to <laughs> secure this tower and secure um, that side of the map even further. Um, we'll see if they Avengers. Ash here as well. <laughs> Avengers yeah, assemble goodbye, bot Ash. Lane. So is, Ash is, uh, has fallen, and they will probably be able to just push mid here and um, maybe get a tier 2. Um, certainly set up for having priority everywhere else on the map as well. They're doing an okay job keeping tabs on the entire map. They've got some wards on the bot side. Um, probably going to... Yep, they just put one top oh, side Viego. as well. And now they're converging on top as well. So yeah, the Viego's trying to get out of a pickle here with... Uh... Mumu and Rakan gonna flash away there to try and avoid the enemies, and looks like Warwick's gonna be caught up here. Probably. Now, if I was Shen, I would turn around and go help. <laughs> yeah, he get, wanted get that kill on the Viego. He, he he wanted to get his. Well, he's gonna say he did get his fourth of the game, but it could have been fifth. He was able to finish <laughs> yeah, the Viego. Yeah. So, give me the kills at this point is probably what he's asking. I mean, I mean, when you're this far ahead, right? You have 24 kills to one. And There's, a 13,000 gold lead whoa. in 19 minutes. You can pretty much just walk in the enemy jungle and say, Hey, hello, what's up? We're Dakota Valley. Uh, you can't basically pass this line. You can pretty much just draw a line at their turrets and say, You can't pass this because of the, the pick that they have and the dominance right now. Yeah, the experience differential. Um, what level you are in this game really determines um, how strong you are and what you're able to do. Um, there is, at minimum, a, let's see here, a two-level... Um, gap between everyone and their their opposing uh, land. North Dakota Valley at least two levels up on their uh, opposing uh, lane partner. So um, that is significant. Oh, and Amumu is just going. He's he's rolling. He's rolling. <laughs> he's he's going to easily pick up the ash here as he uh, turns legendary. Let's see if Everybody Dakota Valley decides to. Uh, to... The mirror. Alrighty, and as the Rift Herald sends itself into the inhibitor turrets, Mumu picks up a double kill, and uh, Shen and Warwick are once again fighting on the island known as Top Lane. <laughs> as uh, oh we see another turret dive here going out onto the uh, the bot lane of uh, northwestern area. Leona falls. I I'm gonna make the call here. Ace. I'm gonna make the call here. Dakota Valley could end the game right now if they, they if they could, wanted yeah. to. The Leona Leona Viego aren't and Warwick aren't gonna be up for 15 seconds, 10 to 15 seconds. Yep. Um, they could 4v2 very easily under tower right now. And uh, given that I have just received the next game, it is uh, quite telling oh. that they have ended this game quite handedly, probably before the 25 minute timer. I'm excited to see how they close this one out. What happens here on this Baron fight? Yep. Um, I imagine yeah, Dakota Valley is going to have the opportunity to get wards down, see everything they need to see, and I guess you've you've spoiled the that conclusion already here, oh, Brendan. Oh man, <laughs> darn! I, yeah, my bad, bro. Sorry. The, uh, the yeah, the gold lead has spoiled it. Let's yeah. see how they approach it. Yes, sir. Of course, we shall see how this does end. <laughs> For all of it. Rakan looking to just say, yo, Viego, I'm sorry, you can't enter the Baron Pit, bro. He's just gonna keep slapping him. Has an easy out here. He can just eat at the Zaya if he wants to. 
Looks like Ash is gonna get caught by the Amumu Bandage Toss. Second charge going another way. Looks like he's gonna die as well. Wow. Leona probably I eventually going to fall. Warwick on the side. Missing his ult, unfortunately. Rick I Khan think Amumu... Close. This is... Yep. Quadra Kill going over to the Zaya. Very, hey. very, very dominant performance here from Dakota Valley Purple as uh, they look to run it down the mid lane to uh, claim game number one in favor of their team. Yes, that was, that was a flawless last fight. Nearly flawless performance from Dakota Valley there. On that last fight, that. I just want to call out Amumu landed the bandage toss onto Huey. Knowing Leona's support nature would force her to turn around and eat in, also spelling her demise as well. So that, I thought, was very um, intelligent, thoughtful, um, incredible yep. performance. And Dakota Valley will take game number one in this best of three series. We will see you uh, shortly here um, into the, the next game, game number two. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to game number two between Dakota Valley Purple and Northwestern Area. Here we are going to uh, see that there was a rather large uh, victory there for Dakota Valley Purple, a very demanding one. And uh, this game number two, uh, we're just going to have to see how things play out here. You never know. Things could uh, shape out for the better for Northwestern Area. So uh, right now we are going into the bands phase. All right, yeah. Um, so we're seeing a lot of the same bands. Um, I, I, I'm assuming from this they have some picks that they've either scouted their opponents, they know what they prefer, so they're getting those off the off the board. I would be shocked if you know they pick if. Uh, Northwestern picks something like Warwick Top now if they think about maybe banning the Shen or uh, maybe they ban out uh, Azaya or Rakan, one or the other, um, just based on the, the very showing performance um, from Dakota Valley last game. So we're seeing nearly mirrored bans, though. We're seeing a lot of the same a lot of the same strategies employed. There's that Shen ban, though. They did not want to deal with uh, the Dakota Valley Shen again, the, sh the Shen menace. Yep. That was a super dominant performance in the first game over the Warwick. Didn't even need to build a Thorn Mail, uh, you know, to uh, reduce that Warwick's healing upon him being auto-attacked, so... You yep. don't have to worry about the healing that's done if you can out-damage the dead, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, Very that's true. the law of the land. So. Um, the Leona pick again. Um, lots of potential with that champion. It can pair well with just about any ADC, and uh, I think... Um, you know, depending on the strategies employed to, to combat Dakota Valley this game, strong pick. There's no reason not to pick Leona. Yeah, man. I mean, especially if it's something that your support is super comfortable with and, you know, that's sort of like one of their main champions. Um, yeah, go ahead and pick it. Uh, probably a Zaya Rakan here in response, right? I mean, yep. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> you know? Exactly. I, I, I guess I'm, 
I wasn't able to scout the players beforehand, but I wonder what other sort of um, ADCs are being brought to the table here on the, the side of Dakota Valley. There are some, some meta picks that are benefiting a lot from uh, this crit uh, the, the crit item uh, buffs Neela for one I mean Neela Rakan sounds absolutely terrifying um, lots of opportunity there so I'm curious if they do just opt to do the exact same thing we've got a Gwen versus Zach so that's interesting uh, Rakan Zach I, I envision they're going to go for another team fight oriented comp one that's mobile one that's able to work together to um, secure everything on the map that they need to if they if Olaf. they approach similar Olaf yes um oh. <laughs> he's going for those indomitable lock you down get on top of you and you can't escape champions so um very I'm personally an Olaf player I'm very curious to to watch the matchup this time around see if he goes for another um Let's see, uh, it was, uh, that was Warwick is now Olaf, and we'll see, Shen is banned this time around, so we'll see what uh, Dakota Valley responds with into that. Yep, I mean, just taking a look at the first three rounds of each bans, uh, the Zac could be used as a flex pick. Uh, I'm not sure if, uh, you know, both jungler and top laner play that. However, it definitely seems to be a bit more popular in the top lane these days. Um, I'm guessing that's an Olaf, that's an Olaf jungle. Interesting. So, uh, not always seen these days, but it can certainly be played there quite well. The, uh, the matchup might end up being Zach Olaf. And uh, Olaf, you know, early game, really wants to, you know, sort of get in there and duel you. Uh, start swinging axes and throwing hands. Getting down. Yeah, <laughs> Olaf absolutely, at least in, from a neutral perspective on the game of League of Legends, Olaf counters Zac. Olaf has very good lane sustain, and he's also able to lock down the champions he plays against. So now we're seeing a Trundle pick. Um, I, I'm curious w whether Zac or Trundle is going to be the top laner. Um, but yes, uh, o Olaf is a very strong Ooh, laner. Oh, and... <laughs> Okay. Okay, so... Yeah, um, That's a fun I pick. think <laughs> very fun pick, very fun pick. If Yone gets any sort of lead, any sort of advantage, any gold advantage, um, that is a problem champion for anyone he's playing against. Um, so very, very curious to see. And once again, we see Dakota Valley here go with a very team fight oriented comp. Let Trundle do what he wants to do, similar to the Shen approach. Let him rock the sideline, let him do what he needs to do. In this case, he can't teleport across the map. Um, however, need Nico, Zaya, Zach, and Rakan is a lot to deal with in a teamfight situation at an objective. Um, so very curious to um, see how uh, Northwestern uh, takes it or uh, takes advantage of what they have selected for their comp and uh, deals with that teamfight comp. I mean, with an Olaf, you can kind of just press one button and say no <laughs> uh, with this their stuff. Um, I'm, my guess is that Yone is there, you know, to like say hey. Uh, we, we want to be able to beat you on the side lane. You know, you have pretty strong pressure here with both the Gwen and the Yone. You know, once they do get some items, they'll be able to be pretty split pushing monsters. And, you know, Nico and Trundle, you know, as decent champions as they are, aren't, you know, on paper able to, you know, match the push that uh, those two can produce um, in pressure. So, yeah, we, as we uh, move and just... into the spectator delay real quick. Uh-oh, looks like that stream is still loading. Never well, mind. here I'll, I'll talk while it's, uh, it's loading as well. Let's let's spell out a little bit what we're talking about when we're saying split pushing, right? We we've talked about how it's a push and pull. It's almost like an RBI in baseball. You have to sacrifice a little bit to to gain points to to make headway. Um, Olaf and Trundle, when we're saying hey, they have some some crazy split pushing potential, they can operate on the opposite side of the map fairly independently without much fear of uh, being being shut down from what they're doing and get towers um, get prio in that lane get wards down and really really uh, secure an advantage on that side of the map independently that is what split pushing is so um, when I'm looking at or Dakota Valley, excuse me, um, they have four champions that are very teamfight oriented and one that they're kind of just letting loose on the opposite side of the map. That's what I anticipate seeing there uh, with the Trundle pick. Yeah, and then, I mean, inversely, uh, you know, with Dakota Valley purple side, uh, they have a lot of options, right? You know, you can, like, send, you can flash Nico Walt and the five people, follow that up with uh, a Zach Elastic Slingshot, and then Rakan even again there for the follow-up engage. It's a very... 
can end up being a very big death ball if you want. And was uh, that was that Dakota? Was the Rakan? Um, yes, Dakota, Nico, yeah. Was that that team is Dakota Valley? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, um, yeah, they're. I, I might have misspoke. Um, Dakota Valley. Yes, they they're. They do have options, certainly. Um, after watching that first game, I anticipate they're going to have a similar approach of, of working together, getting to that middle mid-game and working together to uh, secure team fights. But they certainly do have options. You, you are 100% right there, Brendan. Yes, sir. I'm not going to lie. Mountain Dragon would go crazy here for the side of Dakota Valley Purple. <laughs> Having two big, beefy frontliners like Trundle and Zack and the engage like Nico, keeping the Zaya safe, being able to rain down damage from behind. I mean, they just, hopefully they, <laughs> if they want that, that would be huge for them. So um, I guess over on the other side, I mean, they really need to try to make things work for uh, Northwestern area. Um, I guess probably the few rays of light that we did see were sort of on that bot side. They showed a lot of early aggression with the Hue Leona. They just need to make sure that they're able to, uh, in a sense, not necessarily overstep. If you guys remember the... Leona actually went under turret uh, following the Rakan earlier and gave up first blood because of it. So, um, you know, if the uh, probably important for the jungler to play down bot side towards their strengths like that. It is a very, Huey Leona is a very unorthodox bot lane pick. So I really want to see how they put that to use when they do have a neutral or advantageous position in the game. I think, um, you know, it certainly has potential. Uh, as Brendan was saying, they have options, they have potential, um, but it really is reliant on them not getting behind. If they are three levels down on their lane opponent or, or the, the opposing team as a whole, it's going to be really hard to put that to, um, to work, to good use. So um, Yone, I, I'm really hoping their jungler prioritizes mid and bot lane and gets uh, these these very um, snowball-y, high damage uh, XP reliant champions ahead this game. So now we're on the rift, we're into the game, let's see what happens. Um, yes, sir. Starting start start bot side again. Zack jungle. Zack is, is not the top laner. Trundle versus Olaf top. Um, Zack, so Zack can probably start Raptors here. He might just be hanging out top side to, oh, to wait and see if they... Go for a ward. We've got wow, Gwen is Jungle. That is, I did not anticipate that. They're uh, hitting us again with the, you will never guess what we are about to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these are some or unorthodox picks. Um, I'm I'm thinking Northwestern Mutual. If if I'm guessing, you know what they're, they're trying to employ here. They've got um, Gwen, Olaf, Hue, Yone. Like I was saying, very XP reliant, um, snowball-y ish champions. Once they get ahead, they're a serious problem, a serious uh, issue to deal with for any opponent, any team, any comp. So I'm really hoping they can can lock down an advantage in one of the lanes and put one of them um, to work. Uh, Yone here, um, beginning the early ignite. Wow. Um, so. <laughs> Looks good for the damage numbers. You know what's actually interesting? You, you can use technically, you know, more flashes. You flash earlier in the game, you get more uses out of it. That's how I see it. And wah! Okay, you know, fun <laughs> thing to talk about here. You cannot 1v1 a Trundle level 1 with lethal tempo. He will just smack you harder because his Q is an auto reset and it also steals enemy AD. Yeah, you just can't. You, you, you're not him against Trundle level 1. He will, he will quite literally eat you alive. That, that was. I, I wonder if that was a miscalculation or if Trundle so, um, yeah. just had had the timing there to um, take advantage and and uh, absolutely shock with the, the the damage output there. It's always un unsuspected, um, but that yep. is something to always know. You seriously cannot one v one that champion early no. um, if he has lethal tempo. Olaf here has a ranged ability with his Q to throw his axe, poke, and remove armor. So lots of. Um, potential there to um, put Trundle behind just from the poke. Um, so I hope Olaf takes advantage of that. Yeah, 100%. Uh, looks like the Trundle is going to roam down there, possibly get a ward into the bush, getting early prio level uh, for level 3, making sure that his uh, jungler has easy access to Scuttle Crabs at any given moment. Yon pretty chunked out here, might die to the Pop Blossom. One, two, three. That is enough for Nico to secure the kill. And it looks like the Olaf wants to get, wants to try and hit the Trundle here. Got it. He's and he'll hit it. him one more time, securing the kill there for Dilly. All right, we're seeing Olaf and Trundle having a very 
even start We're to the lane. I like this. Oh, it looks like the Zaya says, I'm going to W onto you and try and get the kill here, but the heal comes out from the Huey, ensuring that the Leona is able to walk out to safety. Looks like things will then calm down in the bot lane, going back to just a state of farming. And yes, Gwen here getting in position to, to look for a gank, but Zack is also here in the bot lane, so we might see a fight over this Scuttle Crab. We might see a invade from Gwen, which would not be a good idea for her. Um, we will see. Um, I anticipate Gwen gets this Scuttle and leaves. Uh, maybe he starts to work towards mid, uh, get Yone ahead, and Trundle walking down Olaf here, see if he can get away. Yeah, it looks like he's just going to say, I'm just going to walk away. You can take your axe, you can try and throw, but you're not going to hit me. Olaf Ooh. not choosing a very good engage there, going in at about 25% health against the Trundle. Will ultimately seal his demise as he drops there, leaving an unfortunately large wave at the Trundle's yes. disposal to throw in the tower. However, he does have TP. But he's just going to walk to lane and say, I'm going to use that another time. <laughs> so, does not matter right now. Trundle is going to get a plate uh, already, so probably maybe one or two. And as Zach looks I... here for the Elastic Slingshot on the Yon. There it is. He's probably just done for. Not much you can do once you've gotten marked by Zach. And uh, that is quite literally his fate sealed. Wow. Unfortunate seeing that. Um... Yeah, no, Zach, Gwen here, Trundle roaming down though to secure the scuttle. Um, now Zach and Trundle are gonna have the opportunity to converge on Gwen here. Yep, looks like Zen is... Gwen is, uh, in between a blob and a hard place, that being the Trundle Pillar. Doesn't matter though, she's able to slip on out of there. Bot lane looking, uh, to get pretty aggressive, being able to, you know, shove in the wave. Probably gonna maybe take it back after this one if they're able to successfully get it under turret. Oh, looks like the wave is just gonna be cleared there. I guess they're going to stay. Doesn't matter too much right now. Grab's yeah, even grade's going on bot. And, and yes, we are once again um, looking to prioritize grubs for Dakota Valley. They they know what they need. Uh, prioritize those objectives. Get ahead. Um, have ever, all the power you need to to win those team fights later. So um, we'll, we'll see how they 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 put these grubs to use. Um, if it looks like last game, they're going to get to push and uh, get to pushing fairly quickly, get the laning phase done with as quick as possible, and, and it groups. So, um, okay, Rakan going in. Looks like Zaya trying to maybe land the root onto the way. Looks like misses the flash pullback, gets stunned that, under Zaya's turret dead. there. Leona picks up the kill. Unfortunate that it does not go to Quay, but a one for zero, or sorry, a one for one is better than anything else. On Olaf mana. here, no mana on the Trundle. Zack is unable to fight back there as Olaf says, I'm too strong, you can't kill me. Yes, um, that's one thing, one good thing to note as well, a very basic element of the game. Every champion has a resource that they need to be able to um, perform in a fight they, to cast their abilities. So um, Trundle right now is not able to employ his full kit because he does not have enough mana to do so. So Olaf might be able to push here, continue to poke with his pillar, or not pillar, excuse me, axe. Um, Trundle not able to use his pillar. It's troll time. <laughs> Nico going in, hitting level <laughs> seven. That should be an easy kill there onto the Yone. Not able to do anything when he is absolutely locked up by the snare. I expect an immediate purchase of Merc Treads upon his earliest convenience because, oh my goodness, having both a Nico mid and a Zac jungle must mean an absolutely, you just can't move when you're flying into those two. Yes, they're, they they know exactly how they play and, and what they do well, and that is locking down the enemy team and handedly winning objective fights um, as well as if the uh, opposing team does not ward, does not see Zach coming in you're almost always going to win that 1v2 because you cannot get away or 2v1. True. I mean we did talk earlier about you know the you know struggles being able to get like deep vision and uh, just vision in general right I mean if you can't see a Zach he's gonna land on you right you know the biggest yeah. counter to Zach is being able to you know see him charge up his elastic slingshot and if he's coming from fog of war I mean, there's no chance, unless you're able to, like, flash it or uh, dash out of it, he's probably going to hit it on you. 
Yeah, Yone greeting a little bit to get some tower plates. He's desperately needing to get that advantage we had talked yeah. about earlier. If he doesn't get an advantage here, he's already 0-3-0, oh, oh, so um, he's going he's gonna to start to need to capitalize on uh, some of these objectives and, and secure some gold to gain relevancy this game. Um, we're seeing Dakota Valley here. Just, they're just getting dragon and and there is vision on it but there's not much that northwestern can do at the moment the waves aren't pushed prido hasn't been established and um our jungler's on the wrong side of the map so um maybe gwen's gonna steal some xp from zach but zach might be thinking more about tired tower diving opportunities to um <laughs> lock down further objectives um keep keep the momentum and um oh, might be another kill going well, never mind. The directed camera did not want to show us a possible kill. Looks like uh, Yon gets it out of there by the skin of his teeth. And that barely like stays alive. Down bot side. Fight here on the top side. Olaf fucking Ragnarok. And Trundle popping the subjugate. But alas, the Trundle is much farther ahead currently right now. Versus the Olaf as he already has Ninja Tabbies as well. On top of that Tiamat's. So he's just able to sort of uh, win out there and uh, beat the Olaf. Tit for tat. If I'm, if I'm that Olaf, I want to get out of the top lane as quickly as possible. I want to get onto the Zaya and the Rakan. He's going to have um, maybe not an advantage, but it'll at least be even. Gwen just looking to engage Trundle here. All right, Trundle WWE went. SmackDown. Lethal Tempo is probably about to proc here. Trundle probably really wants those double buffs. I bet. <laughs> he's like, I was, I want those, Gwen. Those are mine now. Rakan looking to try and get the Leona here. He'll be heal. popped from the Fway. Trading happening in mid as well. Good damage. All it takes from here is uh, Nico to land one more pop blossom, and as uh, Yon gets taken down one more time, fortunately leaving him being 0 for 0. Now, if Nico roams towards Grubs, uh, Northwestern actually has number advantage, and we've seen Trundle use his ultimate. Um, I, I imagine they, they have a good chance of winning this grub fight. Yes! Okay, Rakan and Nico moving towards grubs. Zach re engaging. Zach re engaging and looking. Looks like Nico's gonna pick up an easy kill there with the snare and the pop blossom. Looks like um, Gwen is going to fall as well, and two of the grubs will end up going to the side of Dakota Valley. Um. Northwestern area was able to secure at least a wave run grub, and if I remember correctly, um, the six grubs bonus is a lot more significant than the five, but uh, regardless, five grubs going the way of Dakota Valley Purple, Trundle is living his best life right now. He is getting almost four plates already on the top lane turrets. Man, he's got to feel good about his position right now. Yes, Trundle is going to have free reign top lane and the rest of Dakota Valley is going to be prioritizing mid and bot lane, um, securing those dragons now that they have so many grubs. Um, Trundle can oh. just do this. Prioritize yeah. tower. He's just gonna, he's Does gonna he have the goal to turn? Is he gonna turn on Olaf? Trundle, I, I, this Trundle might have it in him. No, he I just mean, Fortunately, he is not. he is not everything. And uh, Zach looking to try and get uh, onto Olaf, but he flashes away. When you're stuck in the Dragon Pit, not where you want to be at any given time right now. Pop Blossom mm -hmm. coming out, and uh, Nico taking her. Uh, Gwen down, becoming unstoppable. Looks like they're probably yeah. gonna plan a gank here on mid lane on the Yone as he's quite overextended. He's really, really wanting those plates, really wanting that yep. gold, but a little too much. Um, yep. I, I just wanted to refer to one thing, Nico's ultimate there in the dragon pit. That is the exact kind of power they're going to bring. Imagine there's five in the pit. Imagine everyone has converged dragon, all ten players in the pit. Um, when you have Nico, Zach, um, and Rakan in the pit utilizing that CC and that massive AoE damage, um, it's going to be very hard at this point for Northwestern to deal with. So we'll see what they decide to do. It might be avoid objectives and um, you know go for these uh, split pushing opportunities or um, just catching up, honestly, on, on CS, on uh, gold, wherever they can get it. Trundle is going to pick up another kill, slapping him down. Solar Eclipse comes down, Hue ult as well. Zaya flashes forward in an attempt to grab the Hue. Zaya's super low. Ah, oh, the W not quite able to connect from Leona. Can't quite get that onto her. Oh, unless the Rakan acts as a gateway for the Q to come out, but it does not. 
Leprechaun Wait. dropping in lethal as well. W's wow. out. Looks safe. Able to get some really good damage off. I'm honestly surprised they're they're significantly uh, behind. But Hui is is holding on. He's doing really good damage. That was that was impressive. They did they did just nerf the tome that he's currently wielding, but. Um, it could be the wrong tome. There's multiple tomes, multiple Are you items about codex? for. Yes. Yeah, yes, it was a different codex. book. I know the whole li There's a whole <laughs> library of books you can buy as a mage. Uh, this is a different section. That's over in fiction. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. Yeah, Phoenix Codex was nerfed. Lost chapter though stays the same. And uh, speaking of uh, lost chapter, um, oh. Yon's about to be lost in the sauce as he probably drops here to the Nico. Yes, he does. And Olaf pops speaking of sauce. Are... Uh, Goodness. Trundle's got it. Trundle's got the sauce, bro. He is Very absolutely hard to dominating fight. this lane. Very hard to fight a Trundle. It's two levels up. His ultimate steals defenses. Right. Setting uh, up. Well, Rakan getting locked Freebie up here. Three. Looks like he's going to drop. He does. Way getting focused down, though, by the Zaya. He will fall. 2v2 here. Let's see how this plays out. Zach passive being dropped. Has time. Yeah. Zaya getting the pullback, able to get the kill onto the Gwen. Leona accidentally Zenith blading into tower range and then falling to Zaya for the triple kill. With those six grubs, Trundle has free reign to push here topside. He's able to secure every objective. He's got a three-level advantage now on all two-level, excuse me, advantage on Olaf. Um, surpassing that level 11. A level 11 is a power spike for every champion that gets it. Their ultimate hits level two. Trundle is not worried about a single thing right now. He is he's pushing, stealing jungle camps, which is stealing uh, opportunities for for Gwen to uh, come back f from the gold disadvantage that they are currently um, fighting right now. There is over a 10k gold disadvantage, or now a just under 10k gold disadvantage um, that Northwestern is going to have to come up with some serious uh, strategizing to um, deal with. I, it's going to be very difficult again. Yeah, looks like not even a 2v1 is going to help the Trundle there. Also, as Yone drops yet again, trying to push up to the mid turret. Gwen slides e out, just barely avoiding death. Let's see. Well, looks like Gwen's just going to walk it off. Call it good. Trundle's going to probably just remain on the top side there. Probably going to push this wave in, then maybe goes for Rift Herald. Both of uh, mid lane and top lane have push. It would probably be a good idea for them so they could break even more of those inner turrets. But Trundle just says, uh, nope. I'm gonna keep pushing. No, they yeah they have secured <laughs> prio and tempo everywhere. <laughs> like I said, Trundle does not care here. He, he can take whatever care. he wants. He just oh. turns around. Oh, oh he Gwen might drop here. Doing damage. If Olaf gets one more axe to slow. Oh, all right. But on here, here dropping really low. Great uh, damage off right away. now. But if you do end up walking into a Zaya ult, that's normally a death knell for any player. As Rakan's able to get the quickening and grand entrance off, dropping both Way and Leona. A 19 kill difference going on, a 21 or 11k, excuse me, gold difference. No, Dakota Valley really just keeping their tempo, knowing what they're good at and, and sticking to their guns. Uh, very impressive. 100%. Yona getting some good damage off. Oh, Nico was... anticipating the Q back in. Yo, oh, good that damage. Was sick. Alas, Very close even if fight. You, yeah, even if you do proto belt into melee range, this Nico is quite a ways ahead of the Yon. He might have a blade of the Ruin King. It's okay though; he's only two deaths off from the ten death power spike. So, as you know, with any of the Wind Brothers, both Yasuo and Yone, the moment you do hit ten deaths, you become an unstoppable monster. Which no ten death power you. spike is yes, uh, <laughs> indisputable. Mm -hmm. um, Yone still managing to. That's an incredibly f close fight, a sub 400 HP Nico. if there's um, any allies um, later in the game. Not that the game is, has too much opportunity to go too much later with uh, Trundle pushing like this. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's that's potential for a kill right there. Yeah, you know what's not sub uh, 400 HP? Uh, that tower as it just got absolutely melted. And he will do the same to Olaf and probably the Yon here as well. And never mind, he's gonna choose the Gwen first, and he's, he's gonna continue slapping on the inhibitor here with lethal tempo. Absolutely just 
saying it's troll time and going to town here. They can here. keep going. They can keep going. Zach's going to just turn this. Um, they decide to take their wins and, and leave for now. Um, we don't see, we will not see another objective up here for, um, I'm actually not seeing the timers uh -oh. here, but we know it's more than a minute because we cannot see any indicators on the mini-map. So um, in the meantime... Zach drifting around the base here, not knowing that you cannot proc the Rift Herald if there is no other things that have fallen before. That inhibitor needs to go down before you get the towers. One objective at a time. Trundle has no issue yes, with sir. that, yeah. though. <laughs> Trundle slowly getting chipped down here. We'll have to see if he decides to turn this. He does not. Runs away as he pleases. It looks like the way dropped at some point. I wasn't even watching that. Unfortunate. A lot of the wave clear is now um, out of the out of the answer as they have four melee champions left. At this point, um, Northwestern's approach is going to have to be to what we call, at least uh, have called for many years now, the turtle. They're going to have to stay inside <laughs> of their base, farm where they can, defend those towers, force Nico, Zach, and Rakan to dive them, putting at a more exposed position. Um, not saying Dakota Valley can't successfully pull off a, a tower dive. They have the comp to do it, but that at least gives Northwestern as much of an opportunity as they can possibly muster to do something back. As we see here, they turn on Rakan. Yes, sir. The Recon dropping really low, but it does not matter as the Trundle has arrived and he is legendary, immediately slapping the Leona as she falls. And that is going to be the end of that exchange. Lots of ults being thrown and only one kill, surprisingly. But never mind. <laughs> one more. Uh, Huey drops and the Olaf is forced to Ragnarok his way out of that situation. Zaya picking up an inhibitor. Very well done from Dakota Valley Purple to keep the pressure on in mid lane, so they were devoting more people to sort of protecting that mid turret, but can't say it really matters when there's a trundle knocking on that back door that's easily able to practically murder any tower that exists in your base. Yeah, he's sub half HP, and Yone sees it as an opportunity. Trundle sees it as, sees it as an opportunity to pillar, chomp, get 400 health back, and walk away. Steal the jungle on his way out here to um, further the gap. There's almost no opportunity to go for Gwen to farm her jungle safely at this point in time. It's I, I seriously think a turtle strategy is going to be what they're they're able to do here, at least until that inhibitor comes up and they maybe get a pick. Um, securing a 5 versus 4 position. Um, here we're seeing Dakota Valley take advantage of this um, this gold difference that they're experiencing right now. Just safely securing Dragon. No wards on it um, from Northwestern. They have no idea. Probably can guess though. Um, so now we see Dakota Valley marching back mid. Probably can just go straight into the base and end the game if they'd like. Also securing Dragon at the same time. Yep, that is going to be sole point for them. However, I do reckon that this game will be finished up before these uh, actual Soul Dragon spawns. As uh, Trundle looks for his next prey, easily deletes the Yon there. Still legendary at 13 and 1. My goodness, this guy is a monster. Now that uh, Dakota Valley Purple is entering the base, you know, the one problem here that Northwestern Area's team comp sort of faces is that they only have one ranged wave clear champion. They don't really have strong options for getting rid of these barren up minions and super minions that are going to start flooding into their base here soon. Baron buffed minions with a four level up trundle um, behind them is a very very daunting uh, thing to overcome I, I i think you're correct yeah we see the finishing it off right here yes sir as both the way and the olaf drops it looks like leona will be here to follow as the pop blossom also happens never mind gwen is immune but at the end of the day it doesn't matter as the yon drops to the zaya and gwen will follow suit for the ace and Dakota Valley Purple takes this best of three and lends themselves to the quarterfinals in quite a very convincing fashion. Congratulations to them and GG's to both teams. Wow, that was uh, that, that was quite a game. Quite, what quite a showing a from games. Dakota Valley. They came in with a game plan and they, they made it happen. Um, I'm curious to see how the other teams um, react, how their ban phase goes, um, and what sort of counter strategies they'll have to employ to, to deal with such a showing. A hundred percent. Well, thank you all for joining us during this first best of three here for League of Legends. Um, after this game, we will have another best of three match four 
um, for League of Legends uh, between T Area High School League of Legends Team 1 and Sioux Falls, the Inters. Thank you for joining us, and we will catch you guys on the flip side.
Alrighty, hello everybody and welcome back to the second best of three here. We have Sioux Falls The Inters versus T Area High School Team 1. Uh, joining me yet again is my lovely co-caster Kale. And uh, he's going to walk us through here, uh, the band phase, and uh, start off on Champion Select. Thank you, Brendan. Yes. Um, so once again, we're not scouting the actual players. So we're going to postulate that the bands that they choose are going to be particular champions that they really don't enjoy playing against or ones that might counter the champions that they plan to pick. So we've seen an MF band from, from uh, Sioux Falls, uh, Blue Side, um, and we've seen Zareth brand bands from T area all strong champs in their own uh, rights for what they're good at, um, but very curious to see what they start to pick here once we get into these first couple of picks into the game. Uh, Jax, of course, can be, he's, he's a, uh, a pick that's relevant in the jungle, as well as the top. Um, oh. Set, right off the bat, wow, all right, okay. yes. I like that. Punch, punch. That's going to be fun yeah. to watch. <laughs> you, usually, you usually save your solo lane picks for your last picks. Um, it's easier to counter, easier to uh, pick something that's going to be good into the entirety of the opposing team. Um, but if you know you're good at it, you might as well pick it right off the bat. So um, we, we've responded with a Viego and Caitlyn from T-Area, um, both champions that are or Caitlyn, at least, uh, speaking as an ADC player myself, harder to counter, longest-ranged ADC player in the bot lane or ADC champion in the bot lane, um, going to be able to outrange anyone that they decide to pick uh, into her. Vigar as, as a response. Uh, Miss Omidden top picked right off the bat. Very interesting. Yep. All right. Caitlyn Seraphine bot lane. That's going to look to be a very uh, long range. I'm going to assume it's a Seraphine bottom. I mean, it might be mid lane. However, um... <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, that Leona is going to need to get kills early, or it is going to be a very painful lane. Yeah, we've seen we've seen a couple um, surprises as far as where champions go uh, <laughs> sure. earlier in the bracket, and and maybe we get some more surprises um, in the rest of the competition as well. I'm very excited to see um, you know how these how these teams um, finalize and and build. I am. It's hard to postulate exactly, um, you know what sort of strategies these teams are going to employ yet, but um, set, very strong independent laner, Vigar playing for that late game, and uh, Leona, as we discussed lack, last game, um, a very strong support that has few counters and um, is always going to be uh, good at locking down um, opposing champions, especially immobile ones, if Caitlyn um, decides to use her one of her abilities, her only... Um, maneuvering ability she's a sitting duck <laughs> for leona so uh, the last couple bands. yeah last few bands we got the, we got the wind brothers out of the way and uh zin Zhao, a very strong jungler he's also gained some relevancy in the top lane recently at least on other servers and uh kaisa a very strong um adc into caitlin easy to close that gap and um Poses a threat to everyone on the map if she gets ahead so um yes jinx jinx into caitlin Big scale. I mean, it looks like that the team on the side of Sioux Falls is, you know, they just want, they want to survive, bro. You know, you want to get the Vigar stack in, you want to get the Jinx to three items where she'll have like 700 plus attack range. And Lee Sin being picked up, that's a, that's an interesting pick for... That is, uh, that is a skilled champion. If that champion can be uh, played well, utilized well, um, it doesn't even necessarily matter the matchup if you can kick the opposing team or uh, the oppo yeah opponent um, out of position into your team it, it spells the demise of, of whoever the target is it's just very hard to set up so we'll see if they can they can utilize their strengths there um, as brendan was saying vigar and jinx they're playing that that long game waiting to get to the end game uh, utilize their strengths fully set um, if he gets ahead i mean it's He's, he's picking up an opponent, dropping them into the whole team against a Mundo as well. A so, Mundo? Um, oh my gosh, that's going to be huge <laughs> if we can get a big one off. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, so um, I, I'm curious here what T area's uh, strategy is or what their idea may be um, more utilizing the Seraphine and the Silas's ability to steal the opponent's ultimate abilities, maybe, maybe going for more... Um, objective priority or, or objective focused gameplay um while i believe uh, set vigar and jinx spell a, a late game setup that's going to be very hard to deal with uh what are your thoughts brendan 
Well, so I, goodness, that top lane is going to be an interesting one to watch. It's just going to be kind of like a wet noodle fight, it feels like, for, uh, you know, a large part of the game. Mundo and Set are just going to be kind of beating the heck out of each other uh, as long as the sun is up. And uh, mid lane, I mean, presuming Silas Vigar, uh, not 200% yes. sure on the matchup. However, Vigar will eventually have um, sort of an edge on that Silas, you know, initially being ranged. And um, with, you know, having the event horizon, the cage to sort of lock Silas down and not being able to, you know, dash onto the Vigar. So, I mean, and then seeing the bot lane, I just see it as Jinx. You have a, you have a Jinx. You're going to want that Jinx to make it through to the mid game and late game. So, I mean, just play play for late, bro. You know, you have you have options here, right? You can play early through the Lee Sin. Um, you know, you can, has a lot of setup with the Vigar, uh, particularly if you want to like trap in the Vega or Silas. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see how they, these two teams play out. Yes, the, the duality of picking Vigar and Jinx, Vigar especially, the a late game uh, scaling champion, as well as a Lee Sin, a notorious uh, early game champion. He's strongest once he's got a serrated Dirk or a Caulfield Hammer or some of these cheaper items that give him a little bit of damage and um, allow for him to, to move uh, behind the enemy, get them out of position, um, catch them off guard in the early game to secure an advantage. There's a bit of a duality going going on there. I'm, I'm uh, curious to see how they leverage that. So, um, yeah, we're, we're seeing the teams here. They're getting ready to go. They're in the game now. Um, I, I really anticipate a T area going for more objective-focused gameplay with, with what they've got, um, but also... Um, you know, you've got a Silas on your team. Um, get a Silas ahead or a Caitlyn ahead, and um, you, can, you can have an opportunity there to get six grubs and, and side lane all the way into the base so um, we'll see we'll see what they decide to, to leverage and employ yes most certainly and i suppose for those that still don't know um about league of legends it's kind of it's a it's a moba uh, a multiplayer online battle arena it tends to be different from other games that we offer here at fenworks um kale would you be good with sort of giving people sort of a small rundown real quick on what league of legends is about and sort of the main objectives that the teams will be looking here to uh conquer during their time in this best of three yeah yeah so we're saying uh lots of words of, about objectives and pushing and uh getting an advantage and things of that nature we've got two teams of five they're going to be looking to um go to their respective lanes to their respective positions each player has a very specific role and they're going to have to do specific things to succeed in that role um, it's like a game of tug of war i like to well, compare it to baseball it's like um, looking for opportunities to secure rbis you know what are you going to give up um, how are you going to leverage your advantages to um, give something up while simultaneously gaining more than the opponent um, so we've now loaded into the game they're getting ready to uh, position for their initial, um, I guess, jungle. Their junglers are going to start on one end of the map and end up on the other end. So Viego starting top side will be working his way bot lane, and Lee Sin starting bot side is going to be working up towards top lane. So um, right off the bat, I'm, I'm thinking Lee Sin might try to secure a single grub to make sure that the T area is not able to get six of them, and then look to gank a whole bunch because Lee Sin's advantage is to... Leverage the early game, uh, get behind the opponent and um, pick people out of position, uh, help out his laners. He's got a Vigar and a K uh, Jinx, excuse me. If he's able to help them get ahead, they're going to be in a great position. But yes, League of Legends is all about give and take. It's about economy. It's about um, utilizing your strengths um, while uh, taking advantage of the opponent's weaknesses or creating those weaknesses. Mm -hmm, 100%. And also, speaking of strengths, uh, the bot side here... 4T area high school having double ranged over the Jinx and Leona in between the early levels. Uh, they're going to have probably a strong uh, position to get that early push in. And with that Viego starting topside, he'll be able to uh, sort of come down earlier to that bot lane and either try to uh, set up a kill or, uh, you know, just shadow them so that they'll be safe uh, either from an early engage from Leona or if Lisa tries to pull anything cheeky. 
We're seeing some trades going off here in the mid lane already. It's probably a good idea for Silas to do, make it a little more threatening for Vigar to... Uh, Vigar, this this little purple mage we're seeing here, uh, Sioux Falls, the Inters uh, play here. He is going to try to hit the minions, the, the easiest uh, and, and most significant way to receive gold and experience in the game of League of Legends. Uh, he needs to secure those minions. He needs to last hit those minions with one of his abilities to grow increasingly stronger over the course of the game. So Silas's sole purpose in this early game, or his singular goal, excuse me, is going to be um, to prohibit that as much as he can. Get good trades off and, and, and halt that as much as he can. Um, like Brendan was saying at the very beginning, Mundo and Set up in the top lane are two very big bruisery champions. They're going to be hitting each other and probably not getting kills Ooh! unless Set First plays that block. expertly. As Set played that very, very well. He knew his damage and, and yeah. Mundo maybe underestimated a little bit. But yes, that's uh, going to be a lot of farming, a lot of just existing until they're level 6 and they can teleport to... Um, a team fights across the map to to help their teammates yeah honestly it looked like mundo was underestimating what that haymaker can do but here's what i was talking about the leona trying to get in early and it looks like caitlin losing a lot of her health being forced to flash trade here happening in the mid lane vigar just barely a being able to get out there with the event horizon thankfully stopping silas in his tracks and this bot lane is now sort of in a precarious position here because both the uh, Jinx and the Leona now have uh, they're able to get this nice and early back off so that they can get a nice health and mana refresh and also buy some items Jinx going with that coal showing that uh, she really really wants to scale uh, she sort of says to the Caitlyn and Seraphine yo I know you're not able to kill me I almost just killed you by the way so the Jinx is going to try and uh, simply farm it out and scale a gank here top, Leeson doing exactly as, as we had speculated. He's going to gank his his uh, his teammates lanes, trying to secure something there. Mundo just walks away though. Um, Vigar <laughs> eyeing eyeing bot lane. I if they're really thinking about uh, securing um, you know, uh, now that Jinx has a coal, if they can shut that down. They haven't quite seen that yet. Now they're gonna be able to see that Jinx has a coal. If uh, Viego looks to tower dive or steal uh, things from, from the bot side, I, I think that would be a great idea for them to look towards. Although, uh, tower diving a Leona is a very scary thing to do, so maybe they maybe they play it safe. Yeah, it could be a lot of uh, lockdown to ensure that uh, once you're in, you're not able to get out, <laughs> per yes. se. And Man, this set is just absolutely messing up the Mundo so much that he literally is just, he's just like, I'm able to leave lane, I'm gonna go pick up Void Grubs with my jungler real quick. Uh, so that's definitely an easy early thing for Lee Sin. Yep. And Jinx possibly picking up a kill here on the Seraphine. Gabe does end up doing so, but Viego says, Hello, Gabe I'm here to gank. Oh, this just might be a turn 2v3 here. Jinx popping the ghost. Able to get the uh, last Got auto him. off with the fish bones. Very well played. And uh, she gets excited and runs right out of there. The Inters are not doing very much inting right now. They are securing an early <laughs> game advantage. They're, they're 2,000 gold up. Um, a significant early game advantage within the first five minutes of the game. So, um, yes, this is Sets now level six. Mondo has to be very careful um, if Sets is able to ultimate, get behind him, two auto attacks and a W. Um, Mondo might be in a very difficult situation. Um, set new, Set knows, W. Went a little too deep under the tower, so it's a trade. Junglers. Skirmishing early. Lee Sin might just W out. Oh, does Vigor have the ult? Yes, he does. That execute is able to just slice Viego in half and say, well, there's the kill on the Vigar, which yeah, uh, you definitely look. don't want early game. <laughs> great, yeah, great look from Vigar there to assist his jungler and um, secure um, a 10 stack advantage. Um, Vigar, every time he eliminates a champion, gets 10 stacks, whereas if he um, eliminates a minion with his ability, he actually only gets um, one or two. I can't recall exactly, but it's a, it's a slow process, typically, unless he gets a bunch of kills. So um, Vigar is, is feeling pretty good right now. Yeah, I gotta imagine. You're sort of just looking at the game state right now. Both Vigar and Jinx sort of sitting equal or ahead of their lane partners right now on the enemy team 
I mean, you're just sort of sitting here as the Inter's going, I mean, we got late game. Looks like Silas probably isn't making it this one alive as the Event Horizon's dropped. Sonic Wave comes in, he's able to follow up, getting a kill. And Kalen survives just barely, probably with less than 50 health. Jinx not quite level, level six. six. Yeah. Yeah. Biu gets a drop here on Lee Sin, already pretty low. Uh, if he makes it out of here, that'll be pretty... Yep, he's out. Flash Flash is out. Oh, but he goes back in after the Viego wow. is stunned on the event horizon. Very unfortunate there. Uh, the ev even the event kills. horizon, uh, as referred to by Brendan, is, is what we call uh, in the game the baby cage or the stun cage. If you run into the border of that cage, you get stunned. You cannot act or move. Um, you're kind of a sitting duck if you're inside of it, so Lee Sin taking advantage of that as Viego walked into it and uh, not knowing it was there. Um, so, well played. Very well played. Yes, sir. Alrighty, and then it just looks like Viego's walking down bottom side, saying that the Jinx and Leona are currently pushed up. Gonna try to make something happen here. The W unfortunately misses. There's not a lot of follow-up CC from T area's teammates, but it looks like the Leona might just seal her fate here as she then plays into the enemy team. Kill going down to the Caitlyn, getting Jinx, one for free. Jinx doing a great job spacing, but oh, oh. Viego turning into Leona, blocking um, the rockets. Doesn't matter. Jinx still picks up a kill, uh, allowing her to move at an accelerated rate, attack much faster, and Lee Sin's there to pick up this the follow up kill there on Viego as well. Well, Vigar getting another kill, man. I'm not gonna lie. If I am Sioux Falls right now, I am feeling good about our prospects. The dragon is currently up. Bot lane's speed. currently down, it's gonna be good. Set going in for the ult. Getting the kill onto the Mundo, looks like. Wow. Getting a solid lead there in that lane. 17.1k gold to 11.9. Um, significant gold advantage. I mean, it's it's already gonna be a situation where T area has to farm safely. They have to select um, which objectives, which picks, which uh, engages they, they choose very carefully. Um, and, and with that being said, they're going to need to start warding and seeing this Lee Sin uh, ganking or, or coming from uh, far out to, to avoid getting picked off. It's, it's going to be a much more precarious game for T-Area here. Yeah, it's uh, quite unfortunate where, uh, I mean, right now if you're T-Area, you do have angles. Uh, the Caitlyn does scale pretty well. I, I wouldn't say better than the Jinx. Mundo does like to be super tanky as well, so I mean, if they can uh, just continue farming it out, trying to get some picks, I mean, they have fairly good uh, potential here to team fight as well with uh, something like a Seraphine yes. and uh, Mundo frontlining. Silas has a couple good ults to steal as well, like something like the Solar Eclipse from Leona, um, even getting an engage, uh, with, for example, like with the set ult, so. But um, Hilt don't get to steal attack. ultimates if you're dead, so. Uh, a bit unfortunate wow. as uh, Vigar picks up yet another one, turning himself 3-0. Yeah, so uh, Mundo up there in the top lane, T area's top laner playing the, the large purple man. He gets a single item on him right now. He, he does. He's not quite there yet, but he gets one item, presses his ultimate ability, uh, and front lines for for the Caitlyn Seraphine. They're gonna be a constant threat as long as Mundo is alive, which I think they identified. They pick him off to secure Void Grubs. Well, maybe um, looking for the dive here. Yes, they are. Going comes for out. It. Oh, Jinx. not able to. The classic unfortunate oh. occurrence where you auto the tower, but it does not matter. A Jinx's rocket um, does enough damage to secure the kill bot lane. You've got to be loving that one, even though that the Leona fell for that. Jinx is practically getting free plating as we speak, uh, meaning that she's chipping some gold off the tower and able to get something happening. Looks like Silas is in a little bit deep here, not quite able to get out alive. Thought Went in at a rather them. poor time. Yes, they, they didn't have the vision to see the Lee Sin was there, but he had just secured Void Grubs and uh, was playing a little bit, a little bit overzealously. But um, he'll hopefully be able to bounce back here. Set and Mundo. Mundo pops his ultimate. So that's just gonna punch, punch, punch for the kill here. It's uh... wow. The cleaver right. giving him oh, eighty. Oh, does he get away? Flash punch. By golly, Seth's done it.
He's done the impossible. <laughs> Flash punch. I love the two, it. The two big guys doing what they're going to be doing in the, in the solo lane. As long as they're side laning independently, it's going to be a lot of that. Just hitting each other, trying to scrap as much CS, resources, objectives, gold um, as they can. Ooh, well dodged by Caitlyn there. Yeah. Surviving the Leona. Games calm down just a little bit as nobody wants to really kill each other right now, which is, um, you know, unfortunate for us. We like seeing uh, lots of kills going down across the board, but probably good here for T areas. They kind of just want to slow the game down right now to try and recuperate some of those losses that they've incurred so early into this game. I mean, being down 15 kills. 16 kills <laughs> uh, is definitely not good and not a position you want to be in this early in the game. Yeah, so just as, as Brennan was saying, right now there are no objectives up on the map, no big objectives. When we say objectives, we mean dragons, we mean, we mean void grubs, we mean rift heralds, and baron eventually. Um, while they're not up on the map, it's an opportunity to get some wards down, it's an opportunity to farm your waves more safely, certainly, um, if you have those wards in place and, and, and kind of just scale. So um, hopefully T-Area can take advantage of this. Seraphine casting oh. ultimate. I think they're just going to try and focus the turret down. They do not really care who you are. The Jinx is just going to pop them. One, two, three with the auto attacks. Going to switch to fish bones for the increased range. And that's just going to be an easy takedown there for the Jinx. 7-0 on this scaling champion. That is going to be crazy. Even has the call coming in. Six CS left, and that's going to be an extra kill's worth of gold. Oh, this Jinx is absolutely loving it. A thousand gold shut down. I mean, dude, the shutdowns for the side of Sioux Falls, the Inters, I mean, all it takes is just a couple kills from the side of T-Area to, you know, start swinging things their way, hopefully, but with the way things are currently shaping out, it's not going to happen. No, yes, the Inters are doing a great job getting words down. Um, in that example, Vigar can't be picked off if he sees Viego coming from a mile away. He sees him walk on vision, picks him off over the wall. Yep. And Spygar to... is cooking, as we call it. Um, he is hes very <laughs> fed, he's stacking, he's um, exactly where he wants to be at this state in the game. 100%, I mean, this is exactly what you want for this kind of team comp, you know, having, having both your, uh, I guess, carries and scaling champs being the, uh, the biggest ones on the team right now. Jinx going even legendary right now, popping up to 8-0. Very impressive play currently from the side of Sioux Falls, the Inters, and honestly, quite a quite a dominant performance all the way through today. Um, between both of these uh, best of threes, uh, previously uh, Dakota Valley Purple against, um, oh my goodness, I can't remember. My brain's going blank, but that doesn't matter if all is being set up. Yes, um... Sioux Falls looking to secure this uh, Rift Herald. Looks like they get it fairly. <laughs> the late flash into a Vigar Q. It is brutal. You hate to see it. Um, it was a good attempt, though. They need to start trying to steal those objectives to to halt the 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 ramping snowball that is Sioux Falls. The Inters oh. right now. Uh, Silas is probably going to fall here. Yes, sir. You know it. All right, so there are currently four people sitting mid lane with the Rift Herald. My guess is that Sioux Falls here is just going to take it as far as they can go. Shelly's going to get the second crash here onto the inhibitor turret. How low can you go? That turret goes down, and Diego will follow, breaking open the base of Tiaria High School within just over 16 minutes. Set actually dropping here. Which is very That's good. That's a large shutdown. But the Jinx is here, and she is very good. Yeah, um, great, great to get some gold on Mundo. Certainly, he's got his heart steel. He, he um, does Ooh. he still have? No, he, he used his ultimate. Uh, wow. Okay, so they he's are absolutely um, put it, pushing the pedal to the metal here, trying to maybe end it if they can. They can eliminate all of T area the cooldowns on the death timers um, so you see as they fall um, there is a amount of time before they're allowed to come back alive uh, right around 30 seconds right now for Silas at least but yes can't quite end the game 
That is super unfortunate. Jinx basically just dancing around the base with Lethal Tempo procced. Basically able to outkite everybody that even attempts to walk up to her to contest. <laughs> it's kind of just one by one looking Jinx in the eyes and go, Nah, I'd win. You don't. It's a fed Jinx. <laughs> she has almost three items here. No, on 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 that note too, uh, Brendan brings up a very um, important skill in this game, being kiting. Caitlyn typically very good at it. Seraphine great great at kiting. This is um, being able to attack your opponent while you run away, avoiding damage. Um, Jinx is one of the best that there is. Vigar does good enough with his cage there. Um, they're not they're going to need to to start uh, <laughs> avoiding damage a little bit better as. We see Vigar at this point in the game is, is just two shotting, casting two abilities and, and eliminating champions. I I really <laughs> pressed to, to think T area is gonna be able to come up with a strategy, but I'd love to see it. I, I, I imagine they're racking their brains for something um, that they can do. Well, to be fair, in a game like League of Legends, where there is a currency like gold, it becomes sort of exponentially harder to mount a comeback as you know, and typically like a game like Rocket League, you can just score goals as is. It comes down entirely to sort of player skill and being able to sort of make that comeback happen. But in League of Legends, you sort of have gold actively working against you as the enemy uh, just has more gold to buy items, which gives them more stats. Hence, uh, they'll be stronger than your opponents. And uh, you have less gold, less items, equals being more weak, harder to come back. So... And uh, unfortunately, it does not look like this is going to be the case, as that Sioux, is... Sioux Falls is leveraging their, their lead here, making sure that gold gap does not close, and will be destroying inhibitors, looking to destroy Nexus Towers, and then finish the game quickly. Yeah, that is going to be a very commanding win by Sioux Falls. The Inters, 38 kills to 6 in just over 19 minutes. They're going to look to close this game out here with just a couple more kills onto the Seraphine and Mundo. And the Nexus will fall as Sioux Falls, the Inters, takes game one, very handedly moving up to match point here. Wow, incredible showing from Sioux Falls. Um, T area G gave them an opportunity to see how they play, see their, their game plan, and um, we're going to see how they respond. Um, I'm excited to see game two. Maybe we see some very specific uh, bands to counter their lane opponents, um, get some of those, mm -hmm. those scary picks, that Vigar, that Jinx out of the way. Yes, sir, indeed. And with that, we will now kick it off to a very quick intermission. We will be back very quickly as we have already received the invite for the next game. So we will see you guys on Flipside.
everybody and welcome back we apologize we had some technical issues with one of the pcs there were some driver things right. got those sorted out though and we are here now for game number two between sioux falls the inters and t area high school team one of which sioux falls won the first game here looking quite dominant 
Yeah, yes. Um, T area responding very handedly, getting rid of that set, no. just making sure um, the, the Mundo player last game, their top laner, um, has a clear path to, to victory, hopefully employs a strategy up there. Maybe we'll see a similar bruiser matchup. Maybe not. Uh, on the other hand, the Inters are... They know what they don't want to play against. Very similar bands to uh, last game. So um, hopefully um, we see T area. They went to the drawing board. They got to, to think about last game, and they come back with the strategy. T area is going to be on blue side this game, so they'll be on the, the reverse side, and they go with a global threat nocturne so nocturne's going to be able to um attack from afar he's going to be able to uh lessen the vision actually completely remove the vision the the enemy team has for a limited amount of time which we'll get to see in the game but um looks like sioux falls is <laughs> going with uh th th their vigar pick again and and kenan a very interesting uh pick for top a hard champion to pull off um Seeing you know similar AOE threats uh, that we did last game though, um, Kennen massive AOE threat. Vigar puts down the cage; they can't move in that that area around it. And Nila, a another AOE threat. Yo, Nila, let's go. That's Love nice to see Nila threat. picks. Yeah, Hard champ to pull that. off. Incredible utility for her her lane partner during the uh, laning phase, providing more XP. Um, and they they decide to ban the Mundo. Maybe they know that that's a comfort pick for for the T area top laner, and and just want to get rid of it. Um, bit of yeah. a bit of a menacing ban. Seraphine yeah, to close it off. Yeah, you can kind of just pinch. You know, once you get past that first round of picks. Once you have your initial core locked in, you can take a look at the enemy team and go, all right, now what did they play last game? Or, you know, what did they enjoy playing? And you can sort of take that off the table nice and easy for your side. Yeah. Wow, we're seeing... I, I really like this um, this just three-champ comp that T-Area already has locked in. We'll see what their last two picks are, but Nocturne makes the map go uh, dark. It makes it so Sioux Falls can't actually see what's going on, and then they've got a whole ton of champions that can attack from out of vision, or in the case of Gwen, be untargetable. So... If they play a team fight very well, um, they're going to be able to have a very serious threat to to champions like Vigar or Nila or Soraka, who aren't the most mobile when uh, there is a a shadowy, uh, I guess, nightmare figure like Nocturne on top of you. So, um, yeah, we will we will see if they they leverage their strengths there. Rengar as the oh, let's man. take a look at this here. That is the fifth pick there, Rengar rounding out the composition for Sioux Falls. Man, this is a scrappy looking game. We have lots of high octane champions. These guys want to do damage. They want to go in. They want to get kills. So yeah. regardless of how this turns out, I am here for it. And I'm hoping that they deliver as well. Excited to see see how they play it out. Certainly, I think just off of the initial picks, T area's team is very well thought out. It's an incredible team fight comp. They have lots of utility, lots of support for each other, and and have strengths that directly counter the uh, Sioux Falls, the Inters. Um, Rengar, of course, is going to be a threat to Morgana and Twitch. Um, He's all he's he's going to be a threat regardless to to anyone who's squishy. But they've got answers to that. They've got Morganas. They've got Nocturnes. So we'll see see what they see how they respond um, to that. Certainly, um, we're gonna have three minutes here. Uh, I guess Brennan, do you, are you thinking we're gonna see similar um, snowbally um, uh, tempo leveraging pushing from Sioux Falls? you think they're going to employ different strategies with this vastly different team comp, or um, are they going to stick to their guns? Well, you know, um, I just I feel like I have to say this phrase every time, but you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, they know what they like. They know what they want. They know how they uh, play well so far against T-Area. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to assume that they're just going to do the run back here and, um, I mean, to be fair, it's probably going to look a little bit different from last game because you have a little bit less of a conventional bot lane with that Neela. And also having Rengar in the jungle, uh, you're really going to want that guy to get ahead so you can just pretty much start one-tapping all of these relatively squishy characters on the side of T-Area High School. I mean, the only person that really has, like, 
a strong interaction against the Rengar is probably the Gwen where she can go immune and have uh I believe she can uh yeah, yeah. I believe she can properly maybe duel the Rengar if he's not too far ahead. But uh yeah, there's uh, a lot of opportunity here on the side of Sioux Falls to make stuff happen and make it happen quick. Uh I believe is the uh, you know, name of the game here because they ended last game. Um I mean goodness, probably within what was it? Under twenty minutes, an absolutely dominating performance with nineteen minutes and nearly thirty kill advantage last game. I T area is really going to need to nip that in the bud. Make sure that advantage doesn't grow to such um, profound differences. I, I mean, if they can keep it close and, and play to the strengths of their team comp, which they certainly have, um, they, they will have will have an exceptional game on our hands. Yeah, I mean, we did have the solo lanes in a similar position uh, from the previous uh, teams that played Dakota Valley versus um, Northwestern area. Northwestern, the second game, did have Gwen and Yon. Never mind, there was a Gwen in the jungle, I believe, that game. I remember it was thrown off by that as well. So they do have excellent side laners in case, you know, they do have the chance to get ahead and push those leads around the rest of the map. And, you know, the side laners... You know, what you can do is have, you know, Twitch and Morgana be mid lane here and then also, you know, have the Twitch go, Kiki, 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 you know, go invisible <laughs> and uh, throw himself behind you and you have the Nocturne to come in from afar. So there's definitely angles in which T-Area can uh, make this composition work. So as we say that, we are now loading into the game real quick. Awesome. And I will pass this off yet again to Kale to sort of describe the uh, the setups here that both of the teams are starting for their uh, their games. Yes. Um, so, firstly, right off the bat, I think you know when we're talking about a set mundo game where it's two large bruisery champions kind of just hitting each other. Kennen is one of the most under, like, unplayed champions. You don't get to see a Kennen very often. I, I wonder if T-Area has experience, um, you know, it, playing against that champion, being able to, I, I guess, properly estimate the damage output and potential of, of securing kills in that solo lane. If so, if our, our T-Area top lane can can uh, play that lane and stay even and, and hopefully be... Um, yanked here by Nocturne fairly early on. Um, they have a good chance of getting ahead. Once Kennen uses E to go in, she doesn't really have any sort of speedy way to get out. Oh, um, here. They're looking for it. I. I no. It's going to be really. tough level one. Yeah, um, Rengar can't really do a lot. Kennen throws. Quite true. Kennen throws a shuriken. Has no way to stun at level one. And T area just sticking to the classic start bot lane and then work your way up towards the top side of the map. Oh, I anticipate I, I anticipate this this uh, mid laner uh, T area's mid laner Yone uh, is the champion being played this time is gonna not uh, is going to be playing carefully to make sure Vigar cannot uh, secure such a, a massive um, snowballing advantage and the the jungler that has been selected this game is going to. While Rengar is in no way not mobile, has a much harder time succeeding early uh, without proper setup. Uh, Lee Sin can kind of make his own setup, if played well, can, can kind of just make things happen. Rengar needs to it needs to have some, some really proper um, preparation to uh, get a, a good gank off. The lane has to be in the right spot, the wards have to be accounted for, uh, and etc. So um, I think Yone is going to approach this matchup with maybe a little more gusto, a little more um, uh, more power to him. He's going to be able to, to have a little more flexibility. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I mean, ganks pretty six for Rengar, unless you have the empowered uh, Bola Strike. As I say, right here, Faker looking to have his empowered E going straight onto the Yon. The Dark Matter coming down, and that's going to be first blood there for the side of Sioux Falls, the injuries. Yeah, and, and there we saw Rengar waited very patiently to make sure Yone used everything in the tank, had no way to get away, and, and Vigar held his, his cage, his um, his E, to uh, make sure the Yone, as a second measure, I mean, they could Rengar could have just walked into the lane if he, if he so chose, but... Vigar finished it off, capitalizing um, with his stun as well. Um, here we go. Gwen is incredible Ooh. trade from Gwen. 
That was a nice Q there, hitting all charges of it. Snip, oh. snip. Final turret shot. Oh! Well played. Man, Gwen showing up huge here in the early levels. I really doubt Kennen expected that damage to come from a Gwen with a literally no items. <laughs> I think very powerful champion, most notably seen when, when they do have items. Yeah, I, I, I assume, as I was saying earlier, I was a little worried Gwen might not know how to approach the matchup, but Kennen might have underestimated the... Uh, Gwen damage in that case, and, and that's now going to be an advantage Gwen has in the top lane. And uh, Brendan, in, in one of the previous games, mentioned top lane is kind of an island. They're kind of going to stick to their own business for, for a significant <laughs> chunk of the game. And um, with any kind of advantage on either side, it's very easy to leverage when you're on an island. Um, whereas in the bot lane, you can, you're going to get help from your mid, you're going to get help from your jungler. Um, top lane is is a little different uh, battleground, a little different um, setting. So, yeah, incredible trades continuing to happen. Seeing some trades happening here in the bot lane. All just pretty even gameplay right now. Everyone um, playing safely and, and carefully. Uh, Gwen securing a level advantage there. Maybe looking Not to re-engage. Not much to be said right now, yeah, as far as things are concerned. These lanes Objectives are... are Sorry, Brandon, I was just going to say we got 10 seconds on these objectives coming up. They're going to be looking to secure Pryo in their respective lanes. Both teams will be looking to push the lanes and then get some wards down and, and approach these objectives with uh, the hopes of, of getting those early objectives. Um, fairly significant um, advantage. Which first dragon do we have here? It is the Chemtech Soul. Or, not Soul, excuse me, Chemtech Dragon. That first Chemtech is... Um, any first drag is a good dragon to get. I think an Ocean Soul would... would lend very nicely to um, T area and something like an Infernal would be, be great for this high damage, high octane Sioux Falls team. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see how they leverage a Chemtech Dragon or what they prioritize. It looks like a fight here is going to break out on the river as Gwen looks to pop the ulti to grab a kill here. Will she go down? Oh. Unfortunately, yes she will right there before the Rengar. Rengar was really close to being dropped, but he survived just by the skin of his teeth. Yone looking to re-engage here, however, he will drop as well, as I assume he didn't quite have the vision to know that he was about to walk right into a 1v2. Uh, that looked like a bit of an underestimation happening there. I, I don't know if Yone at level 5 is going to be able to 2v1 with that much health. However, I'm not a Yone player. Maybe, maybe he knew his strengths there. Um, and just didn't see the cannon, but um, yeah, that's that, that is going to be putting Sioux Falls ahead by nearly 2k gold. Um, once again, T area is going to have to, to um, collect themselves and, and get ready for the, the next set of objectives and continue to farm in the meantime. I, I think this Twitch looks pretty pressed for an ability to farm. Um, hopefully, you know, they hit level six and Nocturne comes flying in to, to make something happen. Nocturne's currently on the other side of the map and Rengar is getting ready uh, to hit level six and start ganking people. Uh, Rengar turns invisible and can jump very far. Um, to, to initiate his attacks, so um, really he's going to be able to set up a lot of, of plays for a Neela or for a Vigar um, or a Kennen, and I'm excited to, I guess, see how Nocturne responds. Um, so far, the junglers are relatively even in, in, in gold, and Nocturne's keeping up with the CS anyways. Rengar uh, has a little bit of gold advantage from Hill and a couple assists, but relatively even right now, and once it hits six, it's... Uh, the utility Those provided guys. by ultimates. And yeah, Vigar just, just doing what Vigar does. Yep. Dropping more You want to get out of this sky. cage? Uh, get out of it by dying. <laughs> Good job, bro. Yes. Um, that's, that's just a really tough spot to be in. Yone. Yone is going to be able to avoid that a little more handedly once his uh, cooldown reduction is a little bit higher and he can dash around a little easier, dodge the stun. But for now, Vigar's kind of keeping things on a knife's edge, always a threat with the stun. Yeah, uh, so let's see. The junglers do look like they finally are getting close to hitting level 6. Rengar already hitting it as he steals away Nocturne's red buff. Um, I imagine he's going to look for a gank here on the bot side as that yep. switch does look awfully overextended. Basically, should be a free kill with the empowered Bola there. Oh, never mind, Ooh. actually misses it. Gwen here going in deep, 
pressing her advantage, healing with the Conqueror, yep. almost might be able to kill the cannon here, and with the last auto attack, she just barely survives in taking the cannon down. Incredible outplay there, that was some damage Cannon was not, not ready uh, <laughs> to get, but wow, yeah, Cannon bouncing back. Yeah, for sure. Gwen definitely limit <laughs> limit testing. She knows the limits of this champion. She knows that even with almost one auto attack that would kill her, she's able to heal with Conqueror and her ultimate. That was very well done. Um, and definitely a little light shining through right now for T area high school as they look to sort of secure a position and sort of figure out what their win conditions are going to be for this game. Yes, um, I, I once again, I, I really think um, Two Falls picked a, a comp that's going to be great around objectives, very snowball-y. If they get going, they're going to be, um, you know, very easily leveraging their advantage around the critical points on the map, um, the Dragon, the Baron, etc. Uh, while Key Area needs to get an advantage on as many oh, other champions doctor. as they can. Yep, great, great, that was good. Ooh, but the ulti goes... No. Follows the Yone the all the way back. That is <sighs> very, very close. Yes, sir, indeed. And it looks like the Vigar just recalls, calling it a day. It's like, good job, you guys. You guys ulted me, but uh, I'm the one that leaves with a kill. And I gotta imagine it's feeling good about that one. Rengar here looking to be taking up the second set of Void Grubs. That is going to feel really good for uh, pressing those towers as um, bot lane here looks to have had a couple uh, plates taken off. Definitely not nearly as many uh, platings going down this game as there have been in previous ones. But uh, regardless, those will be nice to have when uh, the game sort of transitions uh, in the mid game. And, uh, Rengar here. Four minute. Well, yeah, Rengar is, is stealing jungle camps here very uh, eat without problem except Yone sees it he roams are they gonna catch him Rengar ulted oh he's gonna try and hide here maybe he's gonna turn the turns nocturne responds oh, almost one auto would have been enough to kill him Yone flashing forward very aggressively wants this kill really bad let's see if he's able to get anything done I just probably only needs one more Q yeah, no, I was, was going to say, I, I really liked how Rengar there, he decided to try and go out on his own terms at least, uh, get something out of him uh, being a little out of position there, maybe get a kill, but um, he stole some jungle camps, you know, not a, not a terrible loss, um, but now three to six. Uh, I don't even think he got the little... grab. <laughs> <laughs> oh. he's, he's trying to hit the grab, I don't think he's, he's able to get it, unfortunately, for him. Oh, man. Well, so far, you know, it's... I, relatively uh, even game state it's a uh, they uh it is a gold advantage from sioux falls but uh, by no means is t area out of the out of the running yet they're going to be able to um leverage levels and experience and um everyone's going to have one item here very shortly so well these fights will pick up once laning phase is done here in a couple minutes yeah, we now see that the second dragon is now up. That is going to be an ocean uh, dragon. And uh, that doesn't matter as Nocturne holds Vigar, calls it a day. Gwen looking to go in here again, living by the skin of her teeth. No way. But trading flash for flash here as Kennen is unable to pick up the kill. But it looks like Sioux Falls is... Uh, Oh, no, he misses the Q and Gwen presses W. Gwen is immune, by the way. <laughs> Looks like Sioux Falls will pick up the Ocean Dragon here, evening the Dragon score out to 1-1. Nocturne knew that there wasn't going to be an, uh, an opportunity there to go for drag, so he said, you know what, we'll, we'll, we'll give this one up, we'll go one dragon for one dragon, and uh, look to get the next one. Securing his uh, buffs, or not buffs, excuse me, his jungle camps, if you don't keep eliminating the jungle camps, their gold exp or XP value is, is reduced, uh, meaning less scaling, so he's, he's sticking to what he knows is going to work over the course of this game for him. Imagine this might be a little difficult here. That Vigar is not the scoreline you want to see on a Vigar. <laughs> Having 5-0 right now within 13 minutes. He is getting super fed and super stacked already so soon. Gonna press on to a second item in a bit. 
Sioux Falls, both this game and last game, we didn't touch on this too much, but there is a, a maximum number of minions you're, you're able to get in, in a certain number of minutes, and there's a quote-unquote good or, or bad um, sort of uh, get it, uh, acquiring of the CS, acquiring of the gold and the XP, and Sioux Falls has very handedly um, kept, an, kept a lead in that regard, which is going to, to help them out, even if Gwen gets way ahead of Kennen up there in the top lane, if T-Area's top laner gets ahead of Sioux Falls' top laner. If the bot lane is up on CS, XP, Vigar continues to have a 600 gold shutdown and 110 CS, 109 CS at, at 13, 14 minutes, um, it's going to be much more difficult for T-Area to, to bounce back, and I think Yo is trying to take every opportunity he can to, to do some damage here to uh, possibly get a kill. Great engage. That and that's 900 he, gold. This might be Not exactly what T area needs. Able to get a two for zero here and possibly the Rift Herald if they really want to attack it. Sioux Falls taking down the first bot lane turret after Twitch back. Well. That is an angle, possibly, for T-Area to get back into the game. Able to maybe get down a turret or two with that Rift Money. Herald pressure. Money and, uh, on Nocturne means more ultimates. He's going to be able to fly in more often. He's going to be able to do more damage and be more of an asset to the rest of his team. If he can somehow get Yone uh, to be a threatening force on this map or Twitch to be able to do long-range damage, they're going to be uh, able to uh, work around these objectives a lot easier and respond to uh, the strengths of Sioux Falls. Um, yep, I, I... And as we look topside here, it looks like Rengar is going to attempt to gate here on the Gwen. Gonna get the empowered root off here, and it uh, looks like she is going to fall. Uh, very good job by Rengar. It looks like, uh, you know, Kenan was kind of in a rough spot after he died twice to Gwen in both very, uh, you know, I guess unexpected fashions, right? Both the first time, uh, like level two, and the second time, almost like one auto off of killing her in the first place. So, Rengar being able to sort of refocus topside and help his top laner get back into the game has been really good by him. No. Rengar actually just biding time for his bot lane to make it up there, um, but I think Tiaria smelled what was going on and, and backed up. They, they, they caught the scent of the game plan, stayed alive, just keep farming. Yona engaging on Nila here. Nila presses W, avoids all damage, but Nocturne sees an opportunity. This Nocturne is getting pretty fed. Hopefully he's able to continue this, getting some more kills. However, it looks like he is going to fall with the Nila picking up a double kill now. Getting her three first kills in the board. Three versus one as an assassin is going to be hard for, for anyone, no matter how fed you are. Uh, Nocturne has some survivability, but nothing, nothing that's going to uh, <laughs> let him... Um, Hit, hit through Anila's uh, protective barrier or um, survive once rooted um, in the face of, of two other opponents. Uh, very, very difficult situation there. And T area is sending in their team one at a time here to try and respond. They need to consolidate their efforts and, and send a equal force mid to respond, maybe two champions. Looks like that's what they're doing. Nocturne, Yone responding. Anila and Soraka have to back off now. Yeah, I mean, it looked like the Gwen was just overextended there. I mean, no real wards in the jungle side right now for Tiaria High School, but let's see here as the Nocturne and Rengar dueling it out. Looks like junglers will both be traded one for one here in the uh, the bottom side quadrants as Hextech Soul looks like will be the uh, primary dragon for this game. Not bad for anyone on their team, really. Cooldowns, yep. can't, can't complain. Um, Attack Twitch being too. able to be... Yes, yes. Uh, Gwen, great on Gwen, great on Twitch, great on Yone. Um, what was I thinking? You know, even though yeah, I, I think Tiaria is responding to these skirmishes very well, they're going to need to come up with a game plan as to how they're going to win. What is their win condition? Um, I think they're going to need to get more wards down, and they're going to need to start picking off uh, the Sioux Falls uh, team where they can. You know, Yone right here overextended a little bit in the mid lane. Um, they, they need a position to, to capitalize on, on the mistakes that Sioux Falls makes or, or turn the decisions that Sioux Falls are, is making into mistakes um, by working together as a team. Um, 
Gwen doing just what Gwen does, surviving, <laughs> healing, inc <laughs> that yeah. was insane. Wow, yep. Kennen is having a hard time dealing with a champion that can become invulnerable and then heal uh, a third of her health bar back um, once she uses all of her abilities. Vigar presses R, secures a kill. What's new? Vigar presses R, someone dies. Yeah, it's the is all this time. name of the game. Yeah, holy yes, sir. moly. He is 7-1. and one. He is looking to stay very healthy in this game. Sioux Falls counts, does the numbers game, sees they have an advantage, engage four versus or three versus two, and uh, secure another kill. They're going to be able to get an in hip tower here if they so choose. Uh, Twitch trying to get something. He's, he's getting solo XP and gold bot lane right now. Not, not necessarily a bad decision, but um, definitely is needed by his team at this moment. So we'll see uh, T-Area come together here. Twitch with a flank. Gonna sneaky sneaky. Do we get to see the spray and pray here happen? Nope. He's gonna decide against it. I'm not gonna lie, probably a good decision with the uh, the Neela W being able to block auto attacks. Twitch ain't gonna do much damage to that. So looks like Vigar's just gonna do as Vigar does. Gets a another kill, nice and easy. And uh, after the inhib, it looks like Sioux Falls are gonna back away and take the spoils as they please. Yes, this this Vigar is a pure menace on the rift right now. Um, T area. Oh, incredible ult from T area and Vigar's damage is, is so high at this point in the game. Um, although the engage looked good. Oh, Oops, like... um, we're watching Nocturne take the rift herald all the way down mid into four enemy opponents or en oh. enemy champions. Yeah, looks like, uh, didn't, uh, she just wanted maybe to try and get some chip damage on that first tier <laughs> turret. I don't quite have a, uh, solid explanation as for the events that have just transpired, but, you it's... know, I uh, need to get that Rift Herald off at some point. Yeah, yeah, I, so if, if it was me, um, dropping Rift Herald and securing that time that you've just bought yourself for the enemy team to deal or stop the Rift Herald, you know, buys them time to put down wards on Baron, which is the other significant objective on the map right now. t is going to need to look to set something up here uh, to stop what Sioux Falls is doing. Um, they're just continuing to snowball. They're, they're picking off t area one by one. Yep. The amount of pressure that they're able to cause now that Sioux Falls has a very commanding over 10k gold lead you can see it just by purely how much damage that Vigar ult does. There's going to be three inhibs down right now at 21 minutes. Not quite as a quick uh, win as uh, last time, but, you know, they're knocking on T-Area's Nexus's door within the 21-minute mark. So they have a very, very, I guess, convincing lead here. And uh, they're probably just going to look to end it here. With a, with a 14,000 gold difference and, and significant level advantages uh, for Sioux Falls, no matter how well your team can scale or possibly respond, there's not much you can do. And with Sioux Falls knowing that, they end game two, a best two of three in 21 minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, that will mean that the Inters, Sioux Falls, will now move up to the quarterfinals. Um, we will have the chance to spectate uh, the League of Legends finals tomorrow. Uh, we're actually going to have quite a few uh, finals games tomorrow. So we'll have Chess, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, uh, Rocket League semifinals and finals, and then the League of Legends finals to cap everything off. So if you liked what you saw, uh, stick around because there'll be a lot more of it tomorrow. And with that being said, thank you everybody who's tuned in today to the Fenwork South Dakota Esports State Tournaments. Uh, and thank you, Kale, for casting with me for the League of Legends section. Really appreciate you coming out today. Of course. Thank you, Brendan. Um, we'll be back at it again tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. These teams have a lot of energy, and, and we're excited to see how, how they strategize and, and put their skills to, to work on the rift. So, yes, thank you, everyone, and, and we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Yes, sir. Thank you very much, and we will see you all on the tomorrow.